Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. It is Christmas night, right? It's the 26th night. What does that mean? So it's the night after Christmas. It's the night after Christmas. So Christmas is the 25th? Uh, that's correct. And then, the, which I know, and then the 26th is what? Um, like. Aren't you religious? <laughs> what is it supposed to be? Is it something? It's the day. It's got to be something. I guess it's the first day of Jesus' life, right? Shut up. I hope everyone enjoyed their holiday. We have a great interview with Andrew Schultz coming up. We just got back from New York City. We went to New York for a few days uh, to see my parents, to surprise both of my parents to do a socially distanced, uh, truncated holiday, which is really the way I want to do them from now on. Mm. Ten minutes socially distanced you're alive, I'm alive, okay, cool, bye, we're out of there. I surprised my mother, who's in a mental institution, by the way. Everyone's like, she's going to be so surprised. I'm like, she's insane. It's not going to be that much of a surprise. Every day, she, they just go, today is another thing. And she goes, okay, she's in an institution. I'm sure she was, I'm sure the level of surprise was somewhat muted, you know? I, was, I told her, I said, I'm sorry Trump lost. She felt very bad about that. She goes, I know, I know. And we got to do it through a plate of glass like she's a felon because of Corona. So I got a COVID, whatever. You got to stand. I like Corona. I like calling it the old school. Yeah, I like that. I got to stand outside the plate glass window. And then she kept demeaning Ben. She kept going. I was like, yeah, Ben's my co-producer. She's like, oh, your secretary. I'm like, not really. He's, he edits all my content. She's like, your secretary. I'm like, well, my best friend. She's like, your secretary. He's a secretary. I'm like, well, you know. Certainly some of his duties are secretarial. I mean, there's, you know, but you, you, you took it in stride. She's a lovely woman. You took it in stride. I think she thought it was funny to keep calling me a secretary. I could see her smiling. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, yeah. you, you need to be beaten. And people realize that if someone gives you too many compliments, the things you will do, the horror you will bring <laughs> upon the world would be uh, unquantifiable. This is true. The nightmares that you, if you are not constantly made to feel bad about who you are, mm -hmm. you are not at your best. It's true. It's true. It's a fact. Some people just need it. Mm -hmm. And then we went to see my father and uh, the woman he married, those two goons. They just uh, built a new house. Uh, they didn't build it. They bought a new house two blocks away from their old house because they were bored during the quarantine, and because, as always, they have no money and they're perpetual victims and life is hard. So they bought a new house that's big, not as big as my house. That doesn't matter. It does. And they, uh, they're they living there now in a lovely, idyllic kind of town. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we go there, we surprise my father. And, you know, the first thing he says, he looks at me, he goes, you know, it's so nice here. He goes, during the summer... The kids all throw water balloons at the fire trucks on the 4th of July. He goes, it's real Americana. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Why didn't we live here when I was growing up? Why didn't you give a fuck about that? I was growing up doing cocaine at 13 years old in, in my best friend's house whose mother was a prostitute. And we were doing blow. Where was your care about Americana back then? Where was Santa Claus in the fire truck Back then, you didn't give a shit. Now you care that you're 70 and you have no children. Him and his chick, their kids are gone. They've all been raised in the out of the house. Now they've decided to get a, what a great place to raise our no children. What a great place to raise our dogs. Our dogs. And then my stepmother, who I've, you know, we've had issues, but I mean, we're fine, you know. I, you know, I have no issue with anybody, but she likes to dig. Yeah. She digs. digs. And many of you know this because you have family members that do this. They give a compliment, which is actually uh, the worst thing you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. They give you a compliment and then follow it up with the meanest someone can be to you. Mm -hmm. They try to find your weaknesses, isolate them, and then attack, which is what the woman does. Yes. She, she started with me. She goes, oh, you got, a, you got a nice big house. I said, yeah. She goes, are, are you all, all alone there? She doesn't even ask like that. She goes like this. She goes, first, she goes, so does Ben live with you? I'm like, no, Ben lives with his wife. And I, oh, she goes, oh, so you're alone in the house. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm alone. She goes, does it get lonely there? And I'm like, no, it, it's fine. I like it. I live alone. A lot of people live alone. It doesn't It's not a big deal, but she's just going. She's digging in. And then she goes at him. She goes, 
goes, so you work with him? She goes, how did you meet? And he goes, why? Well, why well, was a comedian in L.A. She goes, oh, so you used to do comedy. She goes, so you don't really do comedy anymore. And Ben's like, no. And my dad's like, well, he works with Tim, and they do this whole thing. And she goes, oh, so you don't do your own comedy <laughs> anymore. Like, again, just trying to needle. Yeah. And then he, it starts to work on him. He starts to get, like, sad. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm just a laugh track. I'm just a laugh track. That's all I do. And I'm like, God damn it. No, don't let her do this. And she starts talking about her own daughter. She goes, my daughter lives in a small apartment and doesn't have any friends. She goes, the law firm's keeping her very busy, but she doesn't have any friends because she hasn't lived in Long Island in a decade. And the only joy in her life is when me and your father take her out for dinner. I'm like, well, I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that's completely untrue. And if she's having such a hard time of it in life, why are you telling me this? God, keep it in. But she likes that. She likes to spread mm -hmm. horror. She does. Yes. I mean, that's just what it is. And poor little Ben was like, I'm like, Ben runs our company. Ben does everything. And Ben was just like, I'm just a laugh track. I'm just a laugh track. <laughs> That's all I do. And I'm just like, work. you could tell. She's, she doesn't work on me. I don't care. I go, yeah, I like being alone. And then we start telling her about Patreon and all the money that we make yeah. and everything. Just because I would never do that. But the way I, I only behaved in that manner because she, uh, it angered her. Yeah, yeah. It angers them when I talk about money. That angers them, yeah. right? Um, but, but we were in and out of there, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. Both of us thoroughly insulted. And this is what you this is what you can do instead of doing the whole holiday party because holidays are fun if you have little kids and you give them Batman and goes Daddy I love you. That's not it for a lot of us. For a lot of us, it's going to a family, sitting around a room with a bunch of people with drinking problems and divorces, multiple bankruptcies. People don't even know who each other are anymore. You're like, who are you again? You're dating who? Your your uncle. Fucking Rick's girlfriend. You've been seeing each other how long? Like, no one knows each other. It's like, it's also, I'm a divorced family, so I don't even know the uncle whose girlfriend this is. Mm -hmm. Like, I, yeah, I'm Sharon. I date Steve. Who's Steve? What are we all doing here? It's a waste of our time. Everybody's like, one, you know, we're all like somehow, this is this odd configuration of human beings in uh, a divorced family where people have several marriages and different children. It's a, have you ever been at these holiday parties where like the kids come in like after they were with their other family? This is true. It's like the saddest thing. It's like, and now the kids are back from dads and the kids run in all manic and they, and they have to start like they fling their jackets off yes. and then they grab their presents and then they like they're like I'm now I'm enjoying my second Christmas with this other family I really don't know. It, it's so weird. And then they introduce the kids to you, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, whatever their names are, you know, hey Ralph. No one's named Ralph, but you know what I mean. I don't. Want, there's too many of their real names for me to use, even though I do talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm shielding the children, but I feel like it just makes sense. But then you look at them and they're like, you know, some, I, I love like the, the, the girls who are kind of cunty, like the, like girls in their like early teens or whatever. Mm -hmm. they're like, this is Tim. This is Timmy's son. And they just go like this. They go, you know, and I'm like, yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry, I don't know why I'm here. Merry Christmas. I hate this. It's such a, I mean, the, the Christmases have just gotten tragic. And then people you barely know hand you garbage gifts. They hand you shit gifts. My stepmother's father once gave me a hard drive. I'm like, what is this? The Zepp Ruder film? It was fucking, he goes, it's, it just says all these facts. He goes, you're a comedian. You should know a bunch of facts. And it was just endless pages of facts about everything you could think about. Really? Yeah. Jesus. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what is this? But you don't know these people, and they shouldn't even be giving you gifts, and yet they are. Yeah. You just fall out of families. You fall out. Like I said to Ben, like, Ben is my family because, like, my mom's nuts. And my dad, I love him, but he's had a lobotomy. I mean, he's been McMurphy. He's talking about his dogs. And then his wife, Maleficent, is trying to ruin our lives here. 
She's trying to just destroy any semblance of self-respect me and this kid have. And then I, I, I choose that or my lunatic mother, you know, in a stop the steal hat with Tina Forty. <laughs> so, and I don't know, and my cousins, and my cousin, listen to this. My cousin, okay, the ones that aren't in jail currently, texts me and goes, hey, I don't ask for much. By the way, good. I don't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. So when you go, I don't ask for much, I go, good. Please don't change that. Please have that be the only text. Hey, I don't ask for much. Oh, noted. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. But then he goes like this. I'm going to read the text. Okay. It's out of his goddamn mind, these people. And I love everyone and respect them. But I have to let everyone know. Listen to this. Yeah. Listen, throwing this out there, I don't ask for much. I don't have a Twitter, and Budweiser is doing this thing. If you send them a pic of your dog, they will put it on their beer can. Can you send this picture to Budweiser and send the hashtag Pupweiser? Hashtag pup what? Aren't you in recovery? Why do you want a dog on a can of Budweiser? What's the next thing you want me to do? Get a picture of your dog on a syringe? You want an Oxycontin with a picture of your cat? Get to work, folks. I've had enough. Then he goes, you know, I'll save the trouble if you answer. I'll just go fuck myself. Correct. Love the little guy, but enough. No, I'm not putting your dog on a can of Budweiser. Many people in our family have wet brain because of that product. Okay. There's people that can't stand up straight without getting vertigo. Yeah, I don't think we should put your puppy on a, on a beer bottle. Enough with the substances, for Christ. Fucking Irish slobs, one and all. Mm -hmm. My skin looks horrible because I just got back from New York and I'm related to these people. And my, I believe my emotions bleed out of my face. That's why I up, uh, uploaded that photo of the studio and, and everyone's shitting on me because I look so bad. So bad. Get it up and show them how bad I look. I want you to know how bad I look. And I know I don't look good now, but I looked horrible. I looked good a week ago, though. Many of you commented on that. Look, oh, wait, go, how much did the vaccine one get? That's fun. 25000 Oh, that's just fun, though. This is me getting the vaccine. Can we play that? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's my own goddamn Twitter. This is me getting the vaccine. I got the vaccine yesterday and I feel great. Thank you for the vaccine. I'm very happy about the vaccine and I feel good. Just fun. Now look at this photo. I mean, and can you do the close up? Mm -hmm. Do a close up on me in this photo if you can. It is so horrid. Go in deep. To my, yes. Further. It's Further. As far as I can go. Find a way to go further. Okay, hold on. This is so harrowing. And Ben looks great, by the way, adding nothing, as he usually does. I, it is so harrowing, this photo of myself, that I was so, I didn't want to post it, but I'm like, I'm going to have to post it. And I did, and I just took my medicine. Because people, people were honestly like, this is horrific. And they were right. But it was a boss picture. Sometimes you got to look. My God. My God, look at that man. Look at that. Everything is the hair, the gray, the blotchiness, the breakout, the fat chin. Like everything came <laughs> together. The expression, the bags under the eyes, everything came together for just a, a, a moment of horror. A corpse. An Irish corpse, better looking than 75% of Irish women, though, let's be honest. <laughs> That's what an Irish woman looks like when she gets older. That's the best you're going to do if someone's named Terry or Colleen. But what a horror. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not watching this, just go to my Instagram and you'll see it. Get it away, please. But I was in New York and because I have to deal now, thank God we were able to go to Artie's South Shore Fish mm -hmm. in Island Park, which reopened. It is the best fish restaurant on Long Island still. They've got the same chef. 
They've got the same fish guy. It is truly amazing, and I'm happy to have gone there, to have flown across the country. Mm. Flown across the country to have patronized such an establishment. And I think that that's a great thing that we did. There it is. Already South Shore Fish in a blizzard, no less. And we did it. The tuna tartare, buffalo calamari, shrimp cocktail, tuna tidbits, baby crab cakes, any of the fishes, their soul is great. They have everything. You go in there, you say, what came in today? What's fresh? Halibut, whatever. You get a little white wine, lemon, you get some potatoes, maybe a sweet potato, a little spinach. Boom, you're done. It's great. Don't shut down more restaurants, please. Stop shutting down restaurants. They have done so much work. The government has done nothing. The government has spent eight months twiddling their fucking thumbs. They haven't passed a relief bill. They haven't done anything. They haven't, they haven't, they've not increased ICU capacity. They haven't built more hospitals. They, they've done nothing. Restaurants, on the other hand, have worked their asses off trying to operate safely. They've done, they've, they've spent tons of money to put outdoor dining in. They put those glass partitions up between tables. They went through all of these different regulations, okay? They want to keep their customers safe. They want to keep their employees safe. They worked harder than the government. And Gavin Newsom and Andrew Cuomo and the other scumbags who run these states uh, are shutting them down and destroying their ability to earn a living and earn money. And I know it's a real disease, and I know it is spiking, but there has to be a better way to do this than to destroy people's livelihoods forever and then let all this fucking money, these bailouts that get passed, go to corporate America. And Jimmy Dore did a whole great thing on this where he goes, this is an upward transfer of wealth, which I, I spoke to Mullen when this first happened. And after 9-11, after all of these things, after the, the, the mortgage crisis, there just is this massive transfer of wealth upwards to the most powerful people, the least vulnerable people in our society are rewarded and the most vulnerable people in our society are fucked. People that work, people that work at fucking food uh, distribution centers, that, you know, the Tyson chicken factory, people that have to have to go to work, essential workers, restaurant workers, people that are earning a living um, not in their house like we are lucky enough to do. They're out there fucking actually going out and earning a fucking living. And by the way, Everybody has a problem with comics doing shows. Nobody has a problem with people working at Ralph's because right. they don't give a shit about those people, okay? Nobody has a problem with that. Nobody has a problem with other workers that are going out and doing essential work. I know there's good arguments why comics shouldn't do shows. I'm not doing shows right now. I hopefully will get back to them in March, okay? Um, but there also has to be an understanding. Like, for some people, there was never a quarantine. Those people never had the luxury of being off, Okay whether they worked at a grocery store or a place like Walmart or Target or whatever it was, or they drove an Uber or a Lyft and they had to earn fucking money. And it's just, discuss I mean, what is left to do with people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell other than publicly execute them? And I, know, and I say that as an intellectual exercise. But what is left to do with this government right now? Truly, what is left to do with the government? These are these people have ordered businesses to shut down. They have not provided any relief, and then they are they go and give you tours of their freezer, like that 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 old witch Nancy Pelosi did seven months ago, where she's walking around showing you that she's got gelato in the free. What what can be done with these people other than to to draw and quarter them, Catholic Inquisition style, put them on a rack. I mean, honestly, why are these people still around? Why in God's name is Nancy Pelosi? She's the wicked witch of the West sister. Like, she's the one where you just saw the feet furl up? Yeah, yeah. Why is she there? Why is Chuck Schumer... These, these people, they don't leave. They have been a part of these wealth transfers. And Jimmy Dore, that great kind of viral clip, they've engineered them. yeah, yeah. Republicans and Democrats have engineered these things. They think they think these things are great. So I don't know what's left to do, truly. And I'm, I, I would never, and I'm not now advocating any type of violence, but I do understand people's frustration. And they go, 
What do you do with a government that has just really completely failed on, on every level here? You got to vote all of these people out, I guess. I mean, that's the only thing you can really do. They are truly uh, enemies of the public good in, in every way. They are enriching themselves and their friends at the expense of everybody else. There was a way to do this. There was a way to do masks and distancing and compromising and building more ICUs and building more beds and increasing hospital uh, capabilities and maybe invoking the Defense Production Act using companies that didn't traditionally make medical equipment and PPE to start doing it. There were ways to do all of this. There were ways to do it, and we didn't do it. We failed at every level, from Trump on down to Lori Lightfoot, who's leading Chicago. Can you get up Lori Lightfoot when she dressed up on Halloween? Lori Lightfoot Halloween costume this year, please. And she came in as like the defeater of Corona or something. She she came in. Are these people are these people insane? This is the your government. These people are running major American cities. But she had another costume that was like, there was something even more. Oh, the Rona Destroyer? Yes, the Rona Destroyer. This is Lori Lightfoot, the mayor of Chicago, as the Rona just. De I mean, the woman runs the city of Chicago, not like a little town. She's running the city of Chicago, dressed in a cape. It's just the Rona destroyer. Go get up Gavin Newsom. Get up this loser. Get a dinner party. Put Get the image on that. This is Gavin Newsom's dinner party that he was at at the French Laundry, which is a phenomenal restaurant. This is it right here. There it is, everybody. An indoor dinner party, which has been covered at nauseum. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I just want to say there he is at an indoor dinner party. Resign. Resign. No, I'm not kidding. Yes. Resign. Who's the mayor of Austin and did the same thing? Yeah, yeah. He flew to Cabo. Yeah, on a good. Yeah, yeah. Resign. Yeah, yeah. Resign. If you break your own lockdown rule that is impoverishing and destroying the lives of people mm. in order to supposedly save them, you need to resign. Look at this criminal. Yeah. yeah. Who is this? The mayor of what? Austin. God. Yep. Steve Adler. Yeah. Resign. Truly. If you're going to do this, you have to resign. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I know they never will. These people never relinquish power at all. But you have to resign. If you're staunchly pro lockdown, that's your position. But you have to not go and do dinner parties at the French Laundry and take planes to Cabo. You can't do it. You can't ask everybody. You can't destroy people's lives and then go out and party. How are the holiday? <laughs> how are the holiday shopping numbers? How are the retail numbers? Well, John, let's see. That's the old thing we pulled up too. It's it says it's doing good. I mean, the economy's doing great. You know, the Dow hit thirty thousand. No, I mean, well, there's there's I'm sure there's numbers. A at the end of this, we're going to find the numbers. You know. After the holiday season is over, people are going to look back at the earnings, how it always is, and they're going to go, yeah, it was probably weak. I mean, look at the unemployment. What are the unemployment numbers right now, Ben? I mean, it's like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Unemployment rate is people are filing claims every week mm -hmm. and it's really really bad you know i mean it's really 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 bad it's gone down but it's going back up again we you got to find out how many people try to find out how many people filed for unemployment last week if we had jamie vernon we'd have it up this will take another hour i hope nobody has anything to do i hope nobody has anything to do it's just another two or three hours here before we get in it Thank you, Ben. 751,000 people filed for jobless claims last week. 
You know what the week before that was? 758000 And two of those motherfuckers should be Gavin Newsom mm -hmm. and that guy in Austin. Truly. I mean, this is fucking, it's crazy. Outdoor dining in L.A. should not be closed down. It accounts for such a small percentage of transmission. Outdoor dining in the sun in L.A. should not be shut down. Indoor dining, I don't know enough about it, but I know that when we're in New York and we're eating in fucking these weird vestibules, mm -hmm. they've built these, like, stables on the street, these stalls that look like a horse would go in, but we're eating in it, right. and we're eating in 35-degree weather, but it's, again, it's a building. It, you have insulation to a degree. It's not insulated and warm, mm -hmm. but you're saying to yourself, I'm in a fucking building. It's a mind fuck. Like, I'm in a building on the street. Instead of in a building, so I don't get it. Why not invest in better air filtration systems? We could have done all of this. Yeah. We could have done all of this, but we didn't do anything. And Trump has been no fucking help. He's out. I mean, he's over it, you know? And um, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating because it's going to be a very, it's going to be a tough holiday season for a lot of people. My father is in the wine business and it's doing very well because a lot of people are drinking, but a lot of his friends are in the restaurant business and they're, Suffering, and they're all scared about another shutdown. They're like, if, if there's another shutdown, we're all fucked. I don't think a lot of people can handle another shutdown, especially in that industry, you know? So it's going to be difficult. My stepmother now works from home permanently. Lucky him. Lucky my dad. Um, but it's, you know, listen. It, it's, 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 a, it's a tough season. So... We've got to find a way to do. Have you found a way for us to do charity? I mean, no, you're smiling. No, no, I have, I have. You're smiling, but it's. I ask no, you to so do I, it a lot. I, yeah, I researched. The best thing we can do is find a church that that we like and Church of Satan. The best thing we can do is directly go to the people, like you said. So we need to find a church that we like and go door to door, give people, you know, there's canned food, there's rent relief, things like that. I'm, I'm trying not to throw out a general thing, but that's what we should do so we don't have to give to one of these big companies that so we God go to, know where the money Let me going. ask you a few questions. We go to a church, mm -hmm. and they give us people's addresses, we show up at the house? Well, you go with, a, well, you're supposed to go with a group of people, but now I'm- What maybe, do you mean? We got, we got COVID I out know. there, and we don't have any friends. What are you talking about a group of people? You want me to go with little Zan? What, what are we doing here? You want me and Candace Owens to knock on doors? What group? You go door to door. You ask people for canned food. If they have any canned food that they, they don't need, you take that, and then you give it to people that need it. Like food Wait a bank minute. Type Wait stuff. a minute. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. Where did you read this? You go to someone's house and you ask them for canned food we, we to give it to someone else? We did this in Texas. Why yeah. didn't you just buy the canned food? It's 10 cents. Or you can go buy canned food too, totally. Yeah, I'm, it seems crazy to go knock on someone's door and go, do you have any corn you're not using? I want to redistribute it. In small towns in Texas, it's not that insane because it's like everybody knows everybody. You know, you knock, you go, hey, Donna, you got any, you know, any green beans or something? Okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. I, I, I don't know where the hell I'm going to do. Where are we going to walk around Beverly Hills? Hi. <laughs> hey. First of all, beautiful home. This is stunning. Did you just buy? I've been here two years. What a two years it's been. I know. Anyway, so me and my producer are, thank you. I'm a, well, it is familiar because I'm, I'm on podcasts a lot. Oh, Rogan, I'm a regular on that. My own show is kind of big and. Right, thank you. I lights out with David Spade. No, you saw that. You saw lights out with David Spade. Well, yeah. Well, thank you. I think I was one of the funnier ones. Many of the people that went in there, they're on drugs. Let's be honest, and they don't work. But I really appreciate that you said all those kind of things. Me and my producer, I guess who you know, right? You're a fan. Are are trying to do a like a charity where if you have any extra, I haven't eaten. I have had not eaten at all, actually. I'm um, Craig's. You ordered Craig's? That's amazing. It's too much for you for one person. Hey, I mean, pinch my, you know, come on. I'll eat some Craig's if you ordered Craig's. That's that's phenomenal. Okay. And you've got some of the pints of the vegan peanut butter chip ice cream. I'd love to see the backyard. I, I would absolutely love to see the backyard. Oh, well, me and my producer were just doing a... Uh, 
We're doing like a, a, a charity. She did get fat. She got very fat. And I think that's why she's not working. She's very fat, and it's why she's not working right now. And it's sad because I think it's it's booze fat. It's that flabby booze fat. It's not, you know, you don't look at her and go, oh, she's full of a Christmas roast. You go, she's full of cheap fuel, if you know what I mean, like gasoline, that type of thing. Yeah, but I mean, I've met her a few times, but oh, she's a cunt. Oh, I don't care. Fuck her. Fuck her and her husband. I don't give a shit about any of it. Yeah. Well, no, me and my producer were trying to collect <laughs> food for uh, needy people. Uh, I, I, oh, my God, I know. It was crazy. Did they come down the street? Did they come down the street chanting? Oh, my God, eat the rich on this street. I mean, it's disgusting. Of course, it's the universities. It's absolutely the universities. Absolutely. I would love one. An Evian is fine. Thank you. <laughs> it's the universities, and I've said it before. It's, there's a lot of problems in the schools, and we've kind of let them get insane. And, oh, I love dogs. I love them. I love them. Yeah. A Shih Tzu. They're fun. It's a very Beverly Hills dog, isn't it? You know, it just kind of just sits on a couch. I love Is this Ovo leather? It's very soft. Yes, it's very, very soft. Oh, the guy's here. He's here. Ben, get the Craigs. <laughs> That'll do. He'll get it. He doesn't mind. No, he doesn't mind. Oh, you you have one. Okay. Get okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nadja Bumban. Yes. Well, it's I mean, listen, it's it's so great to to meet you. And this has been so enjoyable. Absolutely. Oh, we were just trying to figure out like a like a charity or something or Oh, that's very interesting. So you actually have a charity. Interesting. So what are you trying to do? Okay, so you're trying to, like, interesting fashion for women in Afghanistan. So smart. So smart. And you own, so you own some textile mills. Okay. And you're just trying to kind of, because if people look good and feel good, of course. I, well, listen, are you doing a dinner for it? Okay. Here's the deal. Take my information. Let me know if you ever want to do, you know, I'll come, we'll do a dinner. I love, if you ever need a comedian to kind of lighten things up when you have one of these dinners, let's try to build more textile factories so we can churn out some kind of fashion forward clothing for those women in Afghanistan without clits. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, it was good to meet you. I let, You can't go wrong with Craig's. I mean, what am I going to do? That's door to door in this in this town. Yeah. What do you mean door to door? Ben Avery's door to door. Lucy, you know me. It's tough to quit smoking cigarettes, but I've been really helped by Lucy. Lucy is a lozenge. Okay, it comes in three cool flavors: wintergreen, cinnamon, pomegranate. It is a lozenge that has four milligrams of nicotine, and it allows you to gradually step down, so you could turn yourself into a non-smoker. You don't have to vape. You don't have to do any other crazy stuff. You don't have to eat, you know, waffle sundaes and bacon cheeseburgers. What we want you to do is basically try to gradually, you know, remove your dependence on nicotine. It's a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Okay. Finally, tobacco alternatives that really don't suck. They've got a lot of cool flavors. So it's 2020. Get rid of the cigarettes. Unplug your vape. Throw out your dip and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple. You don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Tim Dillon listeners, go to Lucy.co. Use promo code Tim to get 20% off all products. Lucy.co and use promo code TIM to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's Lucy.co and use promo code TIM at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer, warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Higher Side Chats, we talked about this the other day. This is really a great podcast about conspiracies. It's hosted by Greg Carlwood. Friends of mine will send me some of his episodes. I, I listen to a great one on underground military bases. He's got everything, okay? I mean, ancient civilization seeker, 
uh, Graham Hancock. He's got people like Whitney Webb. I mean, secret societies, false flags, alien moon bases, Tesla technology, the COVID-1984 agenda, the higher side chats encourages people to hear from counterculture scholars, authors, doctors, and interesting characters that don't have a voice in the mainstream and see how that perspective and research stands up to the puppet master's carefully crafted monoculture. Use the coupon code Tim Dillon for a free month of the higher side chats premium. Go to the higher side chats.com to sign up. Coupon code Tim Dillon for a free month of the Higher Side Chats Premium. And I'm telling you, I don't really plug a lot of shit, but this, this guy's got a great interview style. He loves smoking weed. He loves mixing it up with these people. And these, these episodes are pretty damn interesting. It's a cool pace. He's relaxed. There's a lot of podcasts that want to advertise on here, and I don't take the ads usually, but this show that I've heard, I don't listen all the time. I don't listen to anything all the time. But I've heard this show. I've enjoyed it. I think Greg Harwood is a great style of interviewing people. And I think this is a very interesting show, even if you don't agree with this or believe it. You don't, you don't have to believe any of it. I think the strength of a show is if, if you don't believe any of it, is it still entertaining? And it is. That show's a great show. So go to the thehiresidechats.com to sign up and you use the coupon, coupon code Tim Dillon for a free month. You know, I can help people privately, but it's hard to give money to an organization. I really don't trust the Red Cross. And I really no. don't trust a lot of different organizations because I know how they're run and they're not run well. No. And it's unfortunate. Um, what is my Christmas present? Your, do you want to know your Christmas present? Me and Katie talked about it today. Oh, stop this. Let me tell you right now. The, let me tell you how that, let me you want to see how that conversation went? Let's imagine him and his wife discussing my oh, Christmas. Come on. No, let's imagine that. Ready? Let's imagine that. Let's have a little fun. Let's have a little fun imagining that. I, I guess we have to get Tim a Christmas present. Ben, he's the fat ogre and he abuses you. You don't need to get him anything. You should cut his throat while he sleeps. Katie, I will do that. But before I have, you know, another opportunity, we should probably get him, like, something he'll like, like a big bowl of pancake batter that he can just cook and eat because he's... He's a pig, Ben. Can we give him something and poison him? He's destroyed your life. He's destroyed our lives. You were supposed to be the biggest arena comedian in America, and now you're working for this fat near do well. I hate him. He's disgusting. So you discuss the present. By the way, that is the exact word for word conversation that happens in that home. That's the exact. That's why he's laughing. It's word for word what happens in that home. He does nothing but take advantage of you and abuse you. He's the worst. So what what uh, Christmas present have you and the missus uh, cooked up for me? I'm such a lucky boy. Well, I, I'm such a lucky man. I know you so much better. She was like, what if I... Got like a framed photo of like all the studios you guys have been in over the years, like from the porch to the. And I was like, no, he'll hate that. She's like, well, what does he like? I'm like, well, he likes Rolls Royces. Yeah. So she well, was like, I, miss, I like more than that. Now you're cheapening me. You're making me into a cartoon <laughs> no, no, and a no, character. No. But you love Rolls Royces. Who doesn't? It's not a knock on you. No, I'm not. I don't think it is, but it's. So we were either going to get you. I also like people that don't plot to kill me. <laughs> People don't plot to poison me. For Christmas, you want like, the CIA to not kill you? Yeah, well, CIA, you and her, whoever. <laughs> so, uh, like a collectible, the the Rolls Royce Continental, like a, because I can't get you an actual. So you're going to get me a little car. Yeah, yeah, but you love looking at the Rolls Royces. I love you, them. You look at pictures of them I all love the time. Them. You yeah. Love, so, yeah. Like, like an actual, so. Well, that's sweet. Yeah, or an ornament, a Rolls Royce ornament, Katie mentioned, which was funny because of the. The ornament that the, the the Greyhound ornament is it's just funny that she even mentioned that. She said, like, "What about a Rolls Royce ornament?" Well, I think that if you and her got all of your money together and got some loans, you could probably get me an old Rolls Royce. How much are how much are old Rolls Royce? Go look it up right now. Look it up right now. I think you could you could get you could go really old. You okay. could get. Let's look at the Rolls Royce Pasadena here, pre-owned. Yeah, let's see. Well. Wait, 123000 Is that it? Yeah. I mean, Ben, let's be honest. You're going to get me an ornament? Why don't you do the real thing? Go back up. What year is that? 
What year is that? 126. The, now? the ghost, 2011. 18,000 miles, that's it. I mean, I got to be honest with you. Why didn't I buy that? Why did I get this dumb Range Rover? The fuck's wrong with me? That is pretty sick. Dude, let me look at that again. That's nice. I mean, dude. What the fuck? Dude, 2013 Ghost. Can I see that? Yeah, yeah. Dude, what if I, what if I sell the Range and get the Ghost? All right, this isn't good broadcasting. <laughs> I'm not getting a Rolls Royce Ghost, but I think you and your wife should for me. We'll get you one one day. A lot of talk. Do you know what your Christmas present is? Is it what your Spanish teacher used to say? She used to say, Mr. Dillon, you get the Robin's egg again, you get zero. <clears throat> no, here's your Christmas present. You know what it is? It's a job. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. You continue to have a job. That's right. Cratchit. You still have a job. We literally had a Thanksgiving where it was Cratchit, where he wanted Thanksgiving morning, I needed him to move furniture out of Whitney Cummings' house, and he couldn't because him and his wife were doing some God only knows Thanksgiving brunch. And I, and I, so, you know, so I, I, of course, am the, I'm like work, grind, help the, you know, get the movers, give them money, give everyone, get, hit everybody off, give everyone, and you know, him is very deeply selfish. So he had that uh, cratchit moment where he goes, I don't need the work and I'll just kind of loaf around. And then I'm like, you should just come to the job. And he goes, bye, I'm, I'll start going to therapy. And I'm like, no, oh, that's not it. That's his generation. Dan does that shit too. It, they're weak. And they go, all right, well, just go to therapy. It's like, no, you could just do the job that you should be doing. But, hey, I appreciate the little car, the tiny little, the, the matchbox car that you and your wife are going to get me. Well, we haven't found it yet. We're well, but, hey, I, I, this is why I love Christmas. This is why I love Christmas. Because I have shared with Ben my, my mind, my comedy, my career, my life. My, you know, all of my friends, all of my connections. Mm -hmm. I've taken him all over the country. He's met some fascinating people. And he has seen some of the most interesting and exciting things that have gone down in media and comedy over the last two years. And I am very excited about my matchbooks, my matchbook Rolls Royce, that you and your wife are going to give me a little matchbook car. Isn't it, isn't it sweet? Well, it'll be bigger than that. I want to find like one that's like that big. I think it's, it's uh, hey, I love it. I think it's sweet. And that's what I love about Christmas. That's what I love about Christmas is that we can give each other the gifts. Yes. You know, that's. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's just funny. But it is funny. It is funny. Yeah, yeah. It is because what are you going to get me? It's hard to get me things, right? It's very hard to get you things. Very yeah. hard to get me something. Yeah, yeah. So why not a matchbook car? <laughs> like a toy for a child, right? Like a, like a child's toy. Uh, no, like I thought you'd put it maybe Just in your get him a little Rolls Royce, that fat fuck. <laughs> Hopefully he'll think it's food. He'll choke on it and die. <laughs> I hate him, Ben. I hope he dies. Well, I'm eagerly anticipating my matchbook car from my best friend and business partner <laughs> who will be giving me, him and his wife, put, they put thought into it and decided that they wanted to get me a little model car. And maybe, maybe I'll get them a model train set. <laughs> Fun. Andrew Schultz has released a four-part comedy special called Schultz. Saves America on Netflix. He is incredibly funny. He's also very savvy and very smart. He understands his business better than many, many people. And this episode is really good because not only, I think, will it entertain people that aren't in this business, but if you're a young person or, or whatever age you are, if you're a creator, if you're in a, a business where you have to be forward thinking and you got to evolve, um, this is a very interesting conversation about how to evolve, how to utilize things uh, like social media and YouTube to build kind of enough 
uh, you know, traction, equity, whatever, so you can go out there and get larger companies to fuck with you. It's an interesting conversation. Andrew knows more about it than pretty much anyone else, you know? So he's been able to do some really amazing shit. Uh, we talk about it for an hour. Then we also go into other stuff, too. Um, so, as always, we thank you for the... Will we have another We have another episode before the end of the year? No, 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 no. That's it? Uh, so the 26th and... 27th, 28th. No, no, no. I, I think our next episode, it drops on the 2nd or 3rd. This is the last one of the year. Yeah. I want to end with a thought. I've been having this thought because I am hopeful about things. And I, I, how great would it be if New Year's Eve, coming up in, a, in about a week, right? Mm -hmm. Clock strikes 12. Mm -hmm. Every country decides to nuke us at the same time. I mean, every single one. Yeah, yeah. How... Great would that be? Great. For old acquaintances and just every country. I mean little countries mm. just firing off whatever they got. Oh, yeah. Just ever just nukes us at the same time on New Year's Eve. That'd be great. Just an idea. Just a thought. Um I mean, it's such a crazy year to, to really think about where this show is, what this show has become. What was the first episode of last year? Can you find it, please? Yeah, yeah one second. Thank you. This is crazy to think where the show has grown and how much the show has grown in a year. And the most insane year that I've ever been a part of in my life. I want to know what the first episode was last year. So our last one of the year was Sal Volcano. So then it was, let me see, not there. It was the History Anus was the last one. And then Low Cost, High Quality, the one we did in the car. Uh, and that was the first episode of last year. Mm -hmm. Low Cost, High Quality. Yeah, January 4th. This has been uh, a year to really remember for many reasons, but this show has grown so dramatically in a year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Insane. Um, we appreciate everybody that watches this show, that listens to it, that tells their friends and family about it. Um, this has been a crazy journey for us. We had no idea we'd be able to do the things we are now doing. You know? We're going all around the country. The shows are all sold out. We've been on the Joe Rogan experience. You know, I've been on it now seven times once with an election live stream and once with one of the most epic podcasts ever recorded sitting next to Alex Jones. It was so cool. one of the coolest things ever. And me and Ben used to sit in a garage in California and watch people like Rogan and, and watch Alex and watch all these people and wonder how we could catapult ourselves into that reality. Truly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and it's kind of amazing to see that we've been able to do that. You know, we've been able to do that. We've been able to kind of, claim some turf and from there be really funny about a lot of fucked up shit that's been happening. A lot of dark stuff that's been happening. And we've been as funny about it as we can, we can be. And we've been doing that for years, but this year it really, it really kind of caught on, you know? And, um, you know, we first met in 2016. Yes. yes. Yeah. And we sat in that garage for a few years and just made shit and talked and smoked cigarettes and which I love for right now. But it was, tr it's truly amazing to be here, be in a new studio, you know? And it's, it's the most insane professional journey I've ever been on in my life. I've done specials. I've sold pilots. I've, I've shot pilots. I've had, Big people produce things that never went anywhere. I've done, you know, I've toured. I've done all this shit. But the building this show has been the most insane professional journey of my life. And I'm sure for you it's in the top five. You know, I would hope. Um, But, I mean, do, do you want to say anything somewhat sincere about the show now? Um, Do you want to get a matchbook car for all the listeners? 
Like Oprah, where they look under the seat. Yeah. Get him a car. Would you like to get a toy car for everyone? <laughs> um, so I can say something sincere? Yes. Um, this Here's what I'll say. <laughs> Here's what I'll say about what the direction we're moving in. We're, we're very excited. No, do it, do it, do it. You're going to say something sincere. No, you'll just make fun of me. I'm not going to make fun of you. Okay. I'm not going to make fun of you. This has been the, the coolest thing ever. To, it's so surreal to go from the garage making sketches on the iPhone because we didn't have a camera. We didn't have a computer. We didn't have any of this stuff, and, and we still did it. To, it's been cool to watch you get successful and famous. It's been really exciting for me, and uh, uh, I love you a lot. That's what I wanted to say. That's if you fair. wanted me to be real. And I, I thank you for everything. Well, and I thank you. I know people think you hate me or something, but it's it, they don't get that it's a joke and stuff. But I, it's been really cool to know you. Well, listen. I just want to say <laughs> that instead of saying all that, you could just show it to me by getting me a small model of a Rolls Royce. <laughs> That I could play with on this desk. Yeah. No, I love you. You're my only family on earth. Literally. It's you, yeah. Jake Paul, and Candace Owens. No, as your stepmother pointed out, you she was like, So you guys only have each other. That's yeah. so sad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you guys are losers. You don't have any other friends. Yeah, and- well, that's yeah. Well, you know. Okay, but she also looks like Danny Aiello. <laughs> so hey. So happy new year, everybody. I'm not, by the way, I, I can't even imagine anyone from my family still talks to me, but I just don't lie. So many comics out there just, they make shit up and they lie. I just talk about the shit that I got to talk about that is real to me. The fact that this show resonates with people, I guess I should look at the fight. There's all these rules. I got to look at the camera. How? Oh. The fact that this show resonates with people, the fact that you guys fucking watch it and you and you send me photos of The fact you guys went and saw me and Dan out there when we were out there performing live and the fact that, like, you know, you've you've allowed this show to grow to what it is and hopefully it grows even more is huge. It is is something that we really enjoy doing. And, um, you know, we we, we are grateful for it. I'm grateful for it, you know? And I I think that we... I don't say that enough, you know, because I'm trying to be funny, which is, um, you know, that's the job of me. Right. Um, but we are definitely grateful for the fact that you guys have been as aggressive in supporting this show. Not not only the patrons, which we appreciate the fuck out of, but everybody who watches on YouTube, everybody who shares it, this, that, and the other thing. And, um, you know, the show is not going to be like a touchy-feely, sentimental show now. But we just wanted, for the end of the year, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this guy loves me so much, he's getting me a toy car. You see what I mean? So I just want to let you know that I appreciate you as much as he appreciates me. And if you guys were here, I would too give you a toy car of a car you can't afford so that you could play with it like a child. Or as my stepmother said, I would, I would bring you into my home and, uh, you know, dress you down. I dress, I would dress you down. But for all of us here at the Tim Dillon Show, which is just literally all of us, it's just, it's Ben and me, that's all, that's the only team that really matters. There's other people on the team and they're whatever, you know, we got agents and managers and people that we like and they're doing good jobs, but the reality is me and Ben are the team and we've taken this thing as, as you know, we'll continue to take it um, as far as we can take it and you guys allow us to take it, you know? Because I think that if we really got smart here, we could turn this audience into a violent militia. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Get out of here! As guys, so much of our identity is wrapped up in our hair, from how it feels after getting a fresh cut to the way it's perfectly styled before going out. Long story short, you don't want to go bald. Keeps is a great product that helps you keep your hair. Okay, all of the all of the um, you know products out there, hair replacement things like that. None of them are good. They don't look good. Keeps helps you keep the hair that you have right now. Prevention is key. Okay, 
Keeps treatments typically take between four and six months to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and more than 100,000 men trust Keeps to keep their hair on their head. It's only $10 a month. Is that? I mean, that's clearly worth keeping your hair, okay? I mean, it really is, you know? I mean, I have friends that take this. This is really important. Other comedians, not going to say who, will keep everyone's... Uh, anonymity, whatever. But I'll tell you right now, it's really good. If you go to keeps.com slash Tim Dillon to receive your first month of treatment for free, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon, okay? And I'm telling you right now, this is the move. They have all the FDA stuff in there, but it's cheaper. Yeah. So this is the generic, the, the two FDA approved medications, this is the generic cheaper form. You got it. You got to do it. Keeps. Ridge Wallet. Yum. Yum. I mean, what can I say about Ridge Wallet other than that it is a wallet? I have done this advertisement now a trillion times. Um, I love the Ridge Wallet. It's a metal wallet. Get it out. I got it right here. All right. God. It is a front pocket wallet. Okay? You put it in your front pocket. It uh you keep your cards in there and your cash in there. Mm-hmm. It's not a big clunky wallet with all the bullshit. It's a cool wallet. Small, sleek, sexy, modern, easy to sanitize. Go get me some of the hand sanitizer from the kitchen. I want to do a demonstration here because people don't realize that we're living in, in perilous times. And I'm trying to show you why the Ridge Wallet is actually the safest. And I don't even know why they don't put this in their ad copy. I mean, it's like, who's working over there? But here we go. All other wallets, we don't know how to sanitize them, right? Watch this. Sanitizer goes in the hand. Here goes the Ridge. Ridge wallet. Look at this. Look how easy this is to sanitize. Super easy. Your wallet has now been sanitized. Go to ridge.com slash T-I-M. Ridge.com slash Tim. Use the code T-I-M. Link in the description. That's ridge.com T-I-M and use code T-I-M. Link in description. Bravo's Below Deck is a show where severely damaged people clean boats and tend to millionaires. It's very entertaining. This season, the chef on board started yelling, eat my cooter at the production crew and then quit. If you want to hear three cis white males break down the show, then listen to another Below Deck podcast hosted by Dylan, Pat, and Nick Davis, the producer of this past weekend and the King and the Sting with Theo Vaughn. If you like The Bachelor, they've got another Bachelor podcast. Nick, Dylan, and Pat just got done with the most recent season that was filmed this summer. Quarantine at La Quinta Resort in Palm Springs. Not that nice. It featured a bulimic army vet who tried to take his own life. Well, no hate on the resort. I've just been nicer places. I have my private home. Uh, it featured a bulimic army vet who tried to take his own life twice in 2019, a former drug addict who was caught trying to steal his father's checks, and an engineer whose brother is a jailbird with tear tattoos on his face. None of this is made up in any way. The next season of The Bachelor featuring the first black male lead in the show's history starts next week and promises to feature and take advantage of equally as damaged people as contestants, okay? So... Go to another Below Deck podcast and another Bachelor podcast on Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review that says Tim Dillon sent you, okay? That's another Below Deck podcast and another Bachelor podcast and leave a five-star review that said Tim Dillon sent you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Andrew Schultz is with us. Schultz Saves America, trending right now on Netflix, six-part comedy series. Four-part. Four part. Four part. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Hulu right now. It is a six-part documentary about Andrew's parents, and it is on Amazon Prime. The dance studio. It's about right? the dance it's studio. About the yeah. dance, dance studio. Ballroom dancing. Ballroom dancing. It's save America. No, it's yeah. four-part. They're yeah. calling it a comedy special. Yeah. Because yeah. it's funny. Yeah. And yeah. it's you, it's kind of like your year in review. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 And you were doing these things on Instagram. Yeah. And you were doing the turn your phone. Everybody fucking loved them. The yeah. rock was what like everybody yeah, yeah. was the watching. Rock's been real cool about that. And and then you you got the opportunity to take it to Netflix. How was it going from Instagram where you could do whatever you want, say whatever you want yeah. to Netflix? Because that's the, I think a big question in people's heads. Like, yeah, you're the independent guy, you do and say what you want. Yeah. But you get away with a lot of shit too on the Netflix. They yeah. they were great. Okay. They were great. Yeah. Legally, it's tricky. Right. There are certain things you just can't say legally. Right. Or, or images was the biggest pain in the ass. Because when we were doing YouTube shit, you just grab any fucking image off the internet. Like, right. Now you got to pay for images. Everything costs money. We probably spent, I don't even know if I should say, probably between fifty and $100,000 on images. Yeah. Images. We did that show Tournament of Laughs on TBS. We had yeah. a sketch about... Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's island yeah, and they yeah. go we can't afford Epstein's island can we yeah. do another island I'm yeah. like no the, the picture of yeah the, the picture. picture they couldn't afford the picture <laughs> of Epstein's island they're like we need another island can we make it work with another island I'm like no use Kona yeah, yeah. <laughs> right right <laughs> four yeah, seasons like, yeah, yeah yeah I don't know but so so it the, and legally it's what you can say about people yeah, so like there was like weird things that they pushed back. Like I have like crazy jokes in it. It's just absurd. Right. And then like there was one joke that was an aside. It wasn't even like a real joke. Right. It was like we we're talking about Corona, and I think the line was like, uh, I think it was like uh, Trump with no experiences in vi experience with viruses outside of the ones he got from Stormy. This right. is not even a joke. Right. Like you know my it's stuff. A fun little it's just thing. a little jab. It's, it's like set it up at the yeah. side, right? Yeah. They're like, you can't say that. And I go, what do you mean? Have you listened to the rest? Right. Like within the first ten seconds, there's yeah. a joke about like female genital mutilation. mutilation. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. So it's just like, why is this? And then the lawyer goes, I basically say that I'm like getting a little upset on right. the phone. I'm like, what's going on? Right. And I go, uh, I go, why can't we say it? Well, well, there's no proof that she's had STDs. And I go, well, she's a whore right. <laughs> for a living. She's a whore. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a job requirement. It's a job. Yeah. And then he goes, that's why. I go, what? He goes, you could hurt her ability to do her job. Oh, wow. So it's not just saying somebody's ugly or whatever. That's yeah, fine. that's okay. Right? But her job is to fuck for money. And if you say she's got an she, STD. She might not be able to fuck for money. It impact, even though it's an illegal job, technically. It's weird. Yeah. Is it's it like, legal? or? I don't it, think it's legal, right? I think you could be a whore some places. I Maybe. think in like Vegas, not Vegas, uh, outside of Vegas, like where the Bunny Ranch was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. That's so that was weird. like, I'm not going to fight that one. Like, I don't care. Like, when you do jokes about uh, the coronavirus yeah. and you do some Chinese jokes, do you get, yeah. and people get a little uh, offended about that? Yeah. Nobody has been offended. No one, no what It's also like you're doing a joke about the president of China, not Chinese people. I literally, I right. mean, this is like, I literally say in it. Like right. my thing is like is like is spe is specifically sarcastic, and right. the people that I'm making fun of are my friends. Of course, you know what I mean. Like yeah. so, when I say Jet yeah. Lee and I put Bobby Lee's picture instead, right, right, like that's right. a nod to Bobby, right? You know what I mean, right, but right. But like this is, I, don't know, I hate when it's that predictable. Like right. our whole thing was, good comedy reviews yeah. are useless to me. They're useless to everyone. I need outrage. Right. Right and anger and anger. Right and they literally you could tell they didn't watch the last episode because right. in the last episode I go this is how media works. Yeah, bloggers right. that mean nothing get angry. Right, real organizations react to the fake news story that the bloggers made as if right. it's real. Yeah, right. Then the bloggers react to the news story and now you've created news out of nothing. Right, right. So we literally say it. And yeah, then, and then it happens. It happens. It happens immediately. And all yeah. of us are just saying like, thank you. What do you think after quarantine? Because yeah. you, you have an interesting eye on culture and yeah, the way yeah. people behave. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows what's going to happen after this ends, right? When we right. get a vaccine. When does it end? Is it the vaccine that I think ends? the vaccine. I, I, I think okay. by September we're, we're totally done. Yeah. I think we're done in phases. Yeah. And I think we're done late spring, early summer. Yeah. We start to really see it. And then by September, I think we're good. Okay. Or do people mm -hmm. run out of their homes and go fuck and take their computers and phones and throw them away? And go, fuck that. I just want to live and jump in a lake and fuck and go to bars and do country line dancing. Do people do that? Or do they go, right. I've just programmed now yeah. to live on this device and yeah. I'm going to live on it forever. What do, you, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah. I, and I've said before in the show, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. But we've learned how to live on these devices One for so week long. of fucking? 
and then everyone's back in. It's like, yeah, why was I doing that? Right. I think it's one week to just know that yeah, you could do it. It'll like, be a one week exactly. to go out hedonism, yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy, do yeah. shit, call family members you yeah. don't even like. <laughs> And then you have to see them. <laughs> I kind of like that Christmas is canceled. Yo, I it? love it. And it, everyone's so angry at me, but I love it. I did 10 minute socially yeah. distance of yeah. things just with my parents. Wave. In like New a York. Drive by. Yeah. Just, just, hey. Right. Right. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Just come, make an underhanded. You know, I went, I went, and I saw my father, my stepmother. Yeah. I said, Hey, how are you? I said, I got a new house. It's really nice. My stepmother goes, Yeah, yeah but you're all alone there. Don't you get lonely? I'm like, <laughs> You got me. All right. I'm out. You, you won. You won. You did it. We can leave. So, but yeah. I, I don't know. But you're you're engaged. Yeah. You're engaged. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna get married. I'm gonna get married. What yeah. made you decide this was just <laughs> the time? Um, I got a great girl, man. I wish yeah. I, could, I I want to be like you know cynical about it, but I really got a great girl, man. Yeah. So it's just lock it up. Literally. Yeah. yeah. She's just yeah. a great girl. It's just awesome. And are, are kids coming soon? No, she's getting her masters. So okay. like, I want her to. Do whatever she wants, and you know, maybe get a job, and then get one of those big fancy what is tech she, jobs. What you know? is she into doing? Um, she's gonna try to work in tech. I mean, that's okay. that's the idea. But like every company's tech, you right. know what I mean? So everything's like, tech. Yeah, exactly. If it's working for Amazon or whatever it is, one of these. Places, the last so. time you came on, a lot of people that listened were in mm -hmm. the creative space, like yeah. all, all, writers, comics, yeah. musicians. I got yeah. hit up by musicians, aspiring yeah. rappers, whoever yeah. people, right? Yeah, and many of them are dead now uh, because that's the way. <laughs> That's the way this business works. It's very sad, but that's the way the business works. But it's working works. out for you. I mean, it's, you, you got a pool it's been, and a jacuzzi. It's been good. It's been good. A jacuzzi. Hey, there's bigger pools. Did they, did they say bigger did jacuzzis. They, did, did, you know? people, did people pronounce it jacuzzi by you um, or did they do jacuzzi? Oh, interesting. No, we in, in Long Island, we yeah. said jacuzzi was too close to the Jews. <laughs> so we you said got, jacuzzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, wait a minute. Or you said, I got the jacuzzi, and they said, good, let's start getting them together and try to- um, Fix this place up a bit. Fix this. Uh, but what are what are people doing now that's working? And yeah. what are people that are not like, if you're a young guy now, yeah. young gal, yeah. young non-binary person, yeah, yeah. and you shout wanna- Shout out to Elliot. Shout out to Elliot Page. Yeah. And you wanna- Get all the money. All the money, Marvel. All Marvel. the money. Hey, Marvel, but like the straight money. Well, I'm com I'm coming out money? too. I want to come out as trans to prove it that there's a trans person they won't fuck with. Because I've proven it with gay. I've proven it with gay. I've proven it with fat and gay. Now I'm gonna prove it with trans. Where I still they're gonna go. No, 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 no. You know, not him. And you know what's funny is like everybody will still be like. Tim, we don't care. Yeah, we don't just care. Keep yeah, just keep ranting. We don't yeah. care what you do with your private time. Yeah. So what do you what do you think? What do you think people Tim's in the special, by the way? Did you yes, see your I picture? Am. I'm excited. Okay. I, people are sending it to okay, me. I good, love that. Good, 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 good. What people what are people doing that? Thank you for sending it over, Ben. Sorry, yeah, to cut no, no problem. Thank you. Three days, I three days I, after. I texted Tim. I go, Tim, can we get a picture of you in the what was it, well, the Megavik? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just wandering around like mini malls. Yes, I got you. And then three days go by, I go, Tim, how's that picture come along? My guy. It yeah, to you. I'm talking a about couches later. with housewives. It's I'm I'm living in the suburbs now. It's a different world. <laughs> you got a jacuzzi. Yeah, and a I have pool, a jacuzzi though. and a pool. a pool. It's not. It's really nice. You it's can get soft. It's very nice. You can get soft. I here. think you're getting soft. Well, I'm trying not a to. A little bit soft. We had, we had Candace Owens on. You Next. did. That's what you're trying to harden so up. So we, we try to harden, harden up. up. Yeah, gotta, you almost you know, ran over that black kid on the yeah, scooter. Yeah, every now and then people think I'm getting soft, and then I got I got to bring somebody in. Yeah. Yeah. So what are people doing now that you go, you're looking at them and going, this is interesting, this is working? Or even like in a general sense, if somebody's out there and they're going, fuck, I love what Andrew did. How do I do that? What mm, do they do? I love what you're doing. Well, that's very sweet. I've, been, you know, I've always loved You've what you're always doing. You've always been a, a yeah, big yeah. fan and a supporter. And, yeah, because you had out. it. You got yeah. it, man. You got well, it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, so I love what you're doing. Well, but think, here's the thing. You. I don't know. I don't know. For what you do, I don't know if it's replicatable. Does that make sense? Uh, well, like people, last time I yeah. came on here, I was like, I people have to give... really destroy their lives to be me. You have to really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to really put the time in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, I but, think you just, I think you'd like. You said, what, was it worth it? Like, yeah, you had an, it's it's not, no. Monologue. I've said a million times, no. I don't want to do any of this. Um, I, I truly don't. I don't want to be in the business. There are bigger pools. But though. I think what you're doing isn't yeah. replicatable either because nobody else is doing it on the level you're doing it. Nobody's doing it well. Yeah. To be honest, there's yeah. a lot of people that had the chance mm. to do the, the funnier version of The Daily Show. Yeah. The yeah. funnier version of that, and they've not done it. 
How have you they been able do to? It. How have you been able to do it? And what does that say to other people that might want to do it out there? Uh, first of all, uh, and I don't care if this sounds corny. I have a great team of guys that are do, like yeah. absolutely hilarious, right? And they're really good. So Mark Gagnon co-created the show with me, and he's a co-creator on the special, right? Uh, Robbie Slovic is a hilarious. Comic, I love Robbie. Yeah. Funny, he writes it's for great. the show. My guy F A Ill guy. He was a guy who never did comedy in his life. He's a right. lawyer in London. Yeah. Love it. And I was just like, dude, you want to come and like yeah. be part of this? this yeah, yeah, be yeah. Good. And uh, he's got the Sudanese girlfriend, and that's where that joke ended up coming from. Wow. And, uh, and uh, But, yeah, so th these guys are great. And then Alex Media, the guy, my Ben, right, he directed right. the whole thing. But So these guys are incredible, and they're all really smart. And um, we come up with these ideas together, so I can't take credit is it for a everything. This is leads yeah. me to my next question. Is comedy now yeah. a team sport? Is this a team sport? It does it, it, if you want to do it at the level that we're doing it, and when I say we, I don't just mean me. I mean like you and there are other yeah. guys that are actually doing it at an elite level where you're right. like affecting culture. Yeah. You cannot do it only by yourself because I'm not. You're competing right. with me right. and my guys. There's no right. way that right. you could do that by yourself. Yeah. Because I'm not... I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the average comic. Right. I'm better than you no, by I mean, myself. I, I can't do it either. Have you seen what I work? I work with him and and Dan Carney. I mean, it's a rough go yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, it is very hard. But very we had difficult. These, we had these combos. Very hard. We we'd be like, it, we had these combos uh, yeah. where you were talking about yeah. you and Ben, and you were like, yeah, I have my guy. We yeah. can do this shit. He's amazing. What is the yeah legit without him? I'm fucked. Yeah. I'm not me. Yeah. Without him, yeah. literally. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so that's very interesting. So if you're a comic now and you're coming up, obviously you get it. Like all these guys, yeah. they, they want all the credit for themselves, and it's like we're gonna end no. up getting the credit. But yeah, if you we're don't get let credit. people know about the squad, like, yeah. it's just not going to... I had I had Dan, Dan, the funny guy, was opening for me, and he did really well one night in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. I, I got on him the night before. Fired him. I was like, I said, well, no, I said to him the night before, I'm like, I want you to go take risks on stage yeah, yeah. and do things you had, like, yeah. go out there, not just jokes, just go out there, whatever. And he went and he murdered. And as he was murdering, I said, I got to destroy him. Yes. So then I got up yes. there, and I just, I called people up on the stage. I mean, yeah. it was just an out-of-body yeah. experience. Yeah. You got to make them forget all about him. Yes. He doesn't exist. And I explained. Yeah. to him afterwards I said <laughs> that's what's great about yeah. having funny people in your orbit yes. is it's a healthy competition yes. and you want to you know you push. want to push push me yeah, yeah. same and thing I, with Mark I want to get Mark pushed Mark is hilarious yeah, yeah he's a very funny me. guy I can't be lazy you know what right. I'm saying I cannot right. be lazy I gotta fucking go he opens up for me on the road yeah. obviously yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. but yeah so having these guys is like it's it, we can create things that just people can't create and like that, that's yeah. the thing. Like we have. How do you find those people? This is a question that a lot of people are going to ask. They're I just look go. for competency. Okay. So like, if you're competent, yeah. you can learn anything. Okay. So if so, Alex Media learned how to edit on Premiere eight days before the, the special came out. Wow. Right. Or before we had to edit the special. Right. And he edited the special. Yeah. And Mark as well. But Mark right. knew how to use Premiere. But like, right. he's so competent that I'm like, yeah, you're going to figure it out. So I'm only looking for competence, and then I and I look for. Do you have as high standards for the content as I do? Because if you right. do, I can relax. Right. If you don't, everything you put out, I got to double check. And, that, and I might as well do just that? done it myself. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? So, like, those are the things I'm always yeah, looking for. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. I look for people that want to, like, win, for lack of a better yeah. word. They want to put out things that people really resonate with. Yes. And they go, this is... And, and then and then sometimes you got to... You're Sometimes I think yes. that, like, you know, it's hard to... It, it, not that it's hard, but I feel like it's a, it's a challenge not always working alone. Because we're used to, as stand-ups, we're used yeah. to, like, go, like we're just, we're, we're, it's just us. Yeah. And we go out there, we work on our jokes, we go out, we do this thing. But when you have other people, you have a team yeah. of people, there's a give and take, push and pull. There's It's a different challenge. Yeah. And, and You can make something greater. You can make something greater. It's like what human beings have done, right? Yeah. It's like we sacrifice a little bit of ourselves for the greater good. It's right. like how you make the pyramids. Do you ever get in disagreements where you go like, I'm going to I'm gonna let Mark win this one because I trust him? Best idea wins. Yeah, best idea wins. No ego. I like that. I have no ego. No ego, best it, idea I wins. I look like I have a lot of ego. Yeah. When it comes to the content, the right. best idea wins and everybody knows it. That's the thing about you. A lot of people look at you and go, you have a lot of ego. And that's mm -hmm. only because of what you say and do. Yes, 100%. But yeah, yeah. The, the way you present yourself. <laughs> that's the only reason people would ever think that. But, but, but actually, 
Here's what's smart about you. Here's You're humble. Sm- They're a bigger sm- pool. Is- <laughs> I have a pool. I, think I I'm in have a pool. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. Thirteen here. foot Christmas tree, but that's how it's, tall trees it's get. Trees. It's, I mean, it's, this it's, is come on. This is nature. It's a horror. My life is a horror. No, I'm very listen. I'm lucky so and I've done well. Horror. I'm, it's not it's horror. A horror. It's a horror. I'm lucky and things have been good, but it's also it was a long stretch of not good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's um, best idea wins. You the thing about you is you surround yourself with very smart people. Yep. You take advice. 100%. You ask people 100%. like that, that, and that's what makes people very successful. Yeah. Is this the funniest thing? Yeah. Is this a? Hey, this is my pitch for the joke. Yeah. And then I got to make everybody in the room that I'm paying feel comfortable enough to tell me. It's not funny. Right. Right? Right. And then, so that is the initial period that everybody gets there. Yeah. And obviously, no, we're not, like, trashing ideas or jokes. We're always like, how can we build that? Like, right. somebody will come up with, like, all right, well, what, what can we do that's kind of connecting Tom Hanks in this way? Right. And then, we'll, oh, what if we did that? And right. And then, okay, I think the Woody joke came around yeah. like that, you know? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. just like, okay, Tom Hanks, they're calling him a pedophile. It's so yeah. dense with jokes. Like, it has yeah. a lot of jokes. Well, so that's, yeah. and I haven't said this on any pod, I'll save it here okay. for here. But, like, the first time I think I, I was going, okay, how can I do comedy in a way where I can compete with these big fucking streaming things, but, like, right. I can get it to the people. So I'm like, okay, I can utilize the internet, and, like, if you don't trust me, maybe I'll give you smaller versions, et cetera. So we figured that out, how the average comic that's funny can put their stuff up and start to, like, put together a career, right? And, like, we got that. This time, the thing that I've always thought about comedy that was so shitty is the shelf life. It's like a magic trick that you tell how you do the trick afterwards. Right. So if you tell the same, if you tell the joke, we're not talking about impressionists, right? We're just talking about like punchlines, whatever. If I right. tell you that joke once, the next time I tell it to you, you're like, ah, we got the it. least funny thing, right? Right? Like it's not funny at but all. You've loaded it with so many jokes, people can watch it again and again and pull new things out of it every time. So that's what I was like. How do I increase the shelf life? And right. we loaded it with so many jokes and. The pictures punch the jokes. Right. So now I'm not doing what these fucking idiots on late night do. I can't believe that they thought that this was okay to tell jokes and wait for a punchline when nobody's there. Right. Wait for the laugh when yeah, nobody's at the there. kitchen table. It's, it's absurd. Yeah. It makes you feel so yeah. uncomfortable yeah. at home. I it's feel very strange. It, it, but I, that shows you how detached they are to like actually like connecting. I think this quarantine, one of the things it's done is it's taken them out of the theaters and taken them out of makeup and taken the writers. And you're, you're kind of like, well, I, I'm sure the writers are still there, but like you see them unmasked for lack of a better word. And you go, oh my God. You suck. You suck. You suck. You're not good. Yeah. I should be famous. Like, people on the couch go, I can be Ellen. I can be not funny, too. Right. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. That's, that's what, what we were is. like. Let's make it so joke dense. We're not going to sit and, like, bask in our laughs. We're literally just going to, the second a joke is finished, another one comes, right? And then the images are going to punch the jokes so you know exactly. Like, there's, we measure those images, like, when we say it. When I say a line, the image is coming out on a specific line. Right. It takes hours to line those images up. And then what we do is we hide all these things in the images. So when you watch the special and you look at me, and you kind of look at images, you see one thing. If you watch the special and only look at the images, it's a different special. Wow, so you have you have like also sensory differences. There's two different yeah. specials. Yeah, happening. They're happening at the same time. Yeah. So then people start listening to it and it has this almost like rap effect where you're like, oh, I didn't notice Jay-Z said that line. Right. Or some and shit like that. And people are going back and forth on Twitter with you and it's like interactive without being hokey. Exactly. So people, I, no, yeah, hokey, no hokey. Let, yeah. But let's do we have like these little lines in there? Like, I I, I want to do something where we can sit down and like go over. Like, right. quote, like we have this one little line, and it's we're talking about the Amy Cooper. Yeah. And uh, uh, instead of saying like, you probably haven't heard about her up until now, yeah, we say you probably haven't heard about her Emmett till now. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Right. And but then, it's quick. It's quick. And then the next line is, so I'll jog your memory. And wow. the picture is Ahmaud Arbery. Yeah. And it's like flashing. So it's, it's like these things yeah. are going so fast. There's it's very no way. racially triggering in very different ways. Yeah. Like it's that is what you just described. So, what, so it's like the people that have us upset about like Asian that, jokes. That's a nightmare for like a freshman yeah. at Columbia University. What you just described It's like yeah. Emmett Till, Arbor. You're yeah. like, oh my god, yeah. they're like short circuiting. They're falling on a dorm room floor. Yeah, but if you got upset yeah. about Asian jokes, it's like 
what, do you just not care about any other group of people? They don't. Everybody got made fun of. Yeah, here. everybody got White made fun people, of. Like I everybody. say, I look like a fucking banker from Gringotts. Right. The hair, like I'm right. trashing me. Yeah, everybody's. Everybody yeah. gets it. So it's like, don't put yourself on a pedestal. What is? What do you want to do when quarantine ends and when you can go back out? Are you like, let's go all over the world? I still got the stand up special. That yeah, I want to put out. You want to put out. So I did wanna, you film it? Didn't film it. We okay. got shut down by that. Yeah. So I want to do that. And then um. I want to get back to doing these, but just like shorter. We'll do right. them, you know, on YouTube and Instagram. Yeah. And then because like, I want to go, like I want to go. I, I realize, like I want to go, and I, I lean to my agents. Like I want to see the world a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, when yeah. this whole thing happened, yeah, I'm like, you know, I've been to Cleveland four times. <laughs> I've been to Cleveland four. And listen, yeah. love hilarities, love everyone yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. the engraved bat. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to go to Amsterdam. All of that. Yeah. I want to see Europe and Brussels. the UK and Brussels yeah. and Ireland and like I want to do comedy everywhere that I can. And when everything was shutting down, I was yeah. like, "Fuck!" Yeah. I really missed my chance. I wanted to be in Australia, and obviously the, the world's going to open up again. But you, you kind of gained so much equity I did. during this time. I like, gained a lot. Now, yeah. when you go over there, it's it, worth it. Tickets will sell. It'll exactly. Be, it'll be worth it. Before, yeah. when you would go over there, it would be like, "Oh, I got a few friends in Brussels. Yeah. I've done that tour in Europe right. when like some people know you." Right. And then I did a tour in Europe where a lot of people knew me. It's different. And the second one is so much, much better. better. Yeah. So much better. So much better. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. then that's what you'll have now. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's fucking sick. You can just travel Europe. You're just right. eating this delicious food. Yeah, like, it's great. Everything's fun. It's just fun. Yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm hoping for. I've been eating good, by the way. Yeah. You, you've been, you've been see, noticing. I've been I eating good. I see what your girl cooks. That's all, no, fuck more my girl cooks, is even that, though she's nice. The restaurants that she picks oh, up. Oh, yeah, she does great restaurants. She, she's like you. She's she like, does great. She's she knows, smart. She gets it. We should all have a little. Let's do it. We'll go out. Absolutely. To Bernadine. We'll go out to Bernadine. Baby. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I w the first time I went there, my dad took me when I was seven. Okay. Yeah. My dad's you seven, hate it. Seventh Bernard grade. It at seven years old. Not seven years old. Seventh grade. Okay. So okay. seventh grade, I went because I wanted to go. I was. But explain that. what it what it is. Just it's so the best. It's the it's really the best probably seafood restaurant in the world. It's that? yeah. I would say so. Okay. It's the top two to three restaurants in New York City. Top five to ten in America. Mm. You know, conservatively speaking. Mm. Um. A. a, a a, a, a just palace, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. of of seafood yeah, yeah. and the, the way they prepare the food and yeah. everything's executed incredibly well. Yeah. And and uh, Eric Repair and the Magai Lacos, RIP, who died, uh, the, the vision of that restaurant was to make this glittering seafood palace in New York City yeah. that would rival the, the greatest restaurants of, of Paris. And, and, and it did, you Successful. know? Successful. Yeah. Successfully, yeah, yeah, yeah. Truly amazing. And I, and I went there in seventh grade and- and and this is my big date to celebrate nothing yeah, with my girl. No, and it's, yeah, I went there when I was popping pimples off my back. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was it was amazing. It was amazing. And then I just realized Grow up, Schultz. Yeah. It, I realized that like, you know, after that, you look at you look at other things and you go, every it's great to listen, here's the thing. It's great to drive in a Rolls Royce. Yeah. You don't have to own one, but it's great to drive in a Rolls Royce. Just test it. Just yeah, yeah, know yeah. and you know why? Know why it's Rolls Royce. Mm. That's the reality. Know why it's a Rolls yeah, Royce. And that's yeah, yeah. And, and my friends Jeffrey and Ghislaine would say these things too. <laughs> you have to drive Rolls Royce. And I don't know what they were talking about, but they said you have to drive it. It's very odd, but they kept bringing that up. Rolls Royce. I don't know. But no, but La Bernadine is that restaurant where you go to it, then you know what everything else is. You go, oh, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, it, 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 it puts things in an order. Yeah. And it yeah, orders yeah. things for you yeah, yeah. in a way. It's like a great athlete or even yeah. a great comic. Like you yeah. see Patrice O'Neill, RIP, yeah. but you're, you're just like, oh, that is the best. You watch Elf in the Room and you yeah. get it. Yeah. You go, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. now I can put everything together and I can organize these things in my head because I've seen this really amazing thing yeah, yeah. that is so rare yeah, yeah. And, and will never happen again right. in the configuration it is, yeah. right? There'll yeah. never be another Patrice. There'll never be another La Bernadette. There'll be great restaurants. Right, right. But that set of circumstances that made that restaurant what it was, Legit. the location, the this yeah. or that it's all there and, and that's what I, I love about going out to eat in really nice places is mm -hmm. that you know that eventually I went to Luger's the other day and I went it's over Bro, it's, it's over. It's over. It's over there. It is. I, we it's went there over. for but, my birthday with my folks. It's, yes, it's over. They're and broken. They're they got broken. broken by that New York Times No article. one's there. It's like, but you know what it is? It's okay because it would be weirder if it wasn't over. Because it was opened in 1863, it's like it's, it's supposed to stop. It's supposed to stop. Yeah, it's supposed to stop. It's too there's, long. There's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. got to be a new era of 
of yes. restaurants, <clears throat> of, 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 of restaurant tours, of chefs, yeah. of people that keep reinventing and reimagining things yeah. to make them better. Yeah, it's like comedy. It's like news. Yeah. It's like media. It's like everything. There, You have to shed the no, skin. No, you look, you said something to me very interesting once. I want yeah. to talk to you about this, about YouTube. Okay, yeah. You said comics are some of the funniest people in the world, but they don't utilize social media effectively, and they yeah. don't. Yeah. And then you look at a lot of YouTubers. Now I'm friends with YouTubers out here in yeah. California, and they're yeah. nice people, but their content is fundamentally different from comics, yeah. right? Yeah. It's fundamentally different. It's more like, hey, this is my day in the life, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Some of them are funny, but yep. their job is not to be funny. Their job is to be relatable or to be accessible, yeah. whatever it is, right? Aspirational. Aspirational, a lot of them. The life is aspirational. Oh, I would be cool to drive in that car. Yeah. I would be cool to go yeah. to these places. Yeah, yeah. How does a comic yeah. whose job is to be very funny yeah. kind of get into this world yeah. of YouTube where it's like, we can't do those things, or we we or would we have to be funny. We have to be funny. Yeah, we are funny. We can be funny because that, that's, it's that's, it's yeah. it is an interesting divide, right? Because yeah. you do look at some of the stuff on there, and you go, "This is some of this content's interesting. Some of yeah. it's you know I don't even know what it is. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, of it yeah, tr yeah. truly I, I don't yeah, yeah. know what it is. I'm yeah. not watching mukbangs. Somebody's just brushing yeah, their yeah, teeth yeah. for three hours. Yeah. It's got ten million views. Yeah. I think society's in trouble. Yeah. Um. But what is it about comedians that they in, the, in those environments don't <laughs> catch on? I think that two things happen. One, we get a false sense of validation from being on stage. That's true. That's they absolutely They don't have true. the stage, so they need the views. That's their... Right. Right? They right. can't go up in front of 30 people at the Village Lantern and do decently and be like, I'm funny today. I did it. I did it. I did it. They need to put out the video, and then by putting out the video, if it's good, so many more people see it. Like, think about how many more people listen to this podcast than see you at a comedy club in Texas. It's, you can't even fathom. But... You could get hundreds of thousands of views that you're getting right now in this. Right. But when we go sell out a theater, we think we made it. Right. Like, how crazy are we? When we're thinking there's yeah. so much. Well, well, Half I, a million people see something, listen to something right. we do. 2,000 people come to a, a but theater. But I think what we, what we do in, the, in that space is, um, is, is unique, right? Because uh, it's, it's kind of what, the same reason that the restaurants are great or the, whatever. It's, 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 it's an audience. Yes, 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 yes And you, you, you appreciate all that. Yes, yes. This, uh, 100 of course, of not to do, also, I negate say what we you. do. But you're right. Long term, you got to reach more people than who's ever in that And then they come room. out to have that truly unique experience yes. of what, what we're doing. Yeah. But I totally understand the connection between chef and comic now. Yes, yeah. It is the I, closest that I've seen yes. in the creative field. I believe, I agree chef with you. and comic. People yes. go, oh, it's like boxing. I used to box. It's nothing like boxing. Right. But chef? Right. Yes. Yes. And I've watched those shows that everybody's watching on Netflix, whatever, but even going through like the experience, they go through almost like the borderline psychosis. Yes. But like trying to take things that are like mundane and make them interesting, like which yes. is literally what we do. Right. And then having to sit there and watch people consume and they have to curate an experience it, for whole, a diner, for, for the whole thing, from when they walk into that restaurant to when they leave. Yeah, yeah. Every course of food, the yeah. service, what it looks like. Yeah. They have to curate that experience. That's that to me. I've always seen that overlap. But to me, I'm almost like, like I want my show to be that way at the theater or the club. Like right. I want it to start when you walk in the door. Right. Not when I go on stage and say hello. When you walk in the door, there should be something. There should be music. There should be something visual. The show right. begins. When you walk in. It sets a tone. Yeah. Right? Like, okay. if we go to La Bernadette or whatever. Like, you walk in. the fucking sommeliers walking around with the the, the, yeah. the pimp cup chains. Right. Right? Yeah, and, yeah, they, yeah. and you're just like, well, What the fuck is going on? I, I, I didn't know anything like that. Right. I don't know anything about these places. Yeah, My yeah, girl yeah. knows the shit. I asked the fucking lady. I was like, what are you, like, what's up with the chain? Yeah. And uh, I thought that she was, like, the head waitress. Right. Do you know what I mean? I, I thought like you they gets the chain. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, that was like yeah, a yeah, status yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a uh, test of vin or whatever I think is the term. A uh, taste of wine. It's yes, French. test of yeah, something like that. Yes, yes. And yes. I guess it's it's an ancient thing. Yeah. That you would have a little whatever, but yeah. it's like what do, what are we doing when we get back into stand up? Like, yeah. what are we doing for our shows? Like, is how do stand up going to be experience? enough? Uh, you know, when you know, because everyone's used to seeing us do all these other things. Yeah, you're, you're on Netflix or the podcast. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to beef up our live shows to make them? It's totally different. I, yeah, I, I want it to be a carnival. Me too. I, like, I, I I agree with you. I and yeah, you would actually fit this perfectly, yeah. right? Because it's like I want to have the hour that we put that that we put out, we put together. And, yeah, and I don't care if it's done in a tiny little comedy club or a big theater, whatever it is. Right. And that was, but when I go tour, tour, yeah, and we're doing fucking theaters and arenas yeah i want this to be a carnival right i want there to be stand-up i want us all to be fucking singing yeah i want i want it to be a wild experience yes because yeah. 
because the reality is, is like one of the reasons why I've been so successful on the road is because I create these unique experiences f- through interacting with the crowd, right? Yeah. So like when you come there, you know that's never going to happen again. Yeah. So you're like, I that's can't miss what, that. That's what I try to do. And then, when you brought the people up on the stage yeah, in Salt Lake. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to everybody do. Everybody there is telling their friends, yeah. I don't know what was happening. He got I, people I, on stage. I want people to, to come to the show and experience an act of domestic terrorism. You know, I want the FBI to look at what constitutes a terrorist group and say, does this does this fit that? Yeah. But I, I, I think it's not yeah. enough anymore to just do stand-up. I, th- I think it is enough, but I think going forward, like, people are going to want all kinds of different shit. I think they- Because it, it's yeah, that go, go, element go. of uncertainty. Yes. Because they walk in, they know you're going to do funny stuff, it's going to yep. be funny. But I think that crowd interaction or crowd work or riffing or any of that, and then you add other people into it, you yeah. add other things, that's what people may want. Yep. Because people that are going to go out, they go, I want a fucking concert. Yeah. I want a fucking really insane night. I want something to tell people about. Yeah. I want to have that experience. It's like the fucking restaurant. You could go have the Dover Soul, yeah. right? Or- you could have Dover sole and then cut it with a fish knife. Right. I don't know what a fish knife is. Right, but it's you want to know. It's not sharp. Yeah. Right, but I got right. this specific knife, and they're like, and oh, yeah, go, that's oh, the one yeah, you cut so, it. Because it's so soft that you don't need to saw you through don't it. You saw through it? Yeah, it's a little trick they do. And now yeah. I'm telling you about it. Let me ask you a controversial question. Yes. Should comics be doing like 10 specials, or is it time to hang it up? Mm. Is it time? <clears throat> what's going on? I don't want to do a special unless I have to talk about something. Right. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, I mean, there's uh, so many comics have been around forever since we're two. Yeah. Is it time for any of them to leave? And this is one of my, this is one of the things I say. Do I, I want the Tim Dill, do I want to do the Tim Dillon show answer or do I, is it the real answer? It's the real answer. The real answer is keep on doing so the wheels fall off okay. if it makes you happy. The Tim okay. Dillon show answer yeah. is a lot of guys got to go. You got to go. A lot of guys got to go. I Tim. love you, but you got to go. You got to go. And I respect you and you've done it. But what are we still doing at a certain point, right? A lot of guys at a certain point, gotta go. You've done it. Like, how much can you do it? Like, it's you know. Yeah. What do you see? Uh, yeah, I mean, I get it. If it makes you happy, do whatever makes you happy. What if we? But did also, a- do what makes me happy. What if- and what makes me happy is you not doing this anymore. Do they have to go? Yes or yes? Yeah, they gotta go. A bit. I love yes or I yes. I think it, yeah, yes or yes. Was we should from- do a yearly purge yeah. of them. Yeah, we just sit it down. Just has to happen. And we just instead of like the top. What is going to happen to comedy clubs yeah. in this? In in this comedy. I think comedy clubs are good because I think that's. I think comedy clubs are going to be good. They'll and be good. I, I think if they can hang on, because it's just a hard yeah, economic thing. I think thing. a lot of them will hang on. I, yeah, I don't know. For whatever yeah. reason, I think a lot of them will. But I think they're good, and I think that will be one of the first experiences that people go back out in public to do. Yeah, it's kind of safe. You're not making yeah. out with strangers in a dance floor. Right. You are you are already somewhat distance, gotcha. but you're with your friends, you're yeah. laughing, and you're kind of like somebody's regaling the times, and you want to relate to it. I think, right. I think they'll thrive. Yeah. But, um, a hundred percent. The comedy clubs is where we'll be working on our bits and then have these kind of intimate yeah. experiences. But when it comes to creating a show, yeah. The reality is if I'm doing the garden, yeah, and I'm making fun of someone in the front row, nobody else in the garden can see that person in the front right. row. So I have to change my show to yeah. accommodate that venue. The venue, and right? The experience. You you can't even doing the the monologue what we're doing, it's like I have to constantly change what I'm doing. Like right. early in my career, I was just doing material. I put out two right. specials of material. Right. Okay. I got really good at that. And I'm not yeah. trying to pat myself on the back, right. but I was really good at it. Right. What am I not really good at? How let's can get I better at let's it. get better? Yeah. Okay. I see these guys doing monologues all the time. Never once have I thought they're funny. Right. And I'm just like, how has nobody tried to do this funny yet? Right. They suck. Right. Okay, maybe I could. I'm terrified of yeah. looking like an idiot. Right. Terrified? Good. I should go do that thing I'm terrified of. We start doing it, and then it works out. Why don't out. people do more shit that scares them? You, why do you think? I don't know. I mean, I I, I would say that you it's painful. Yeah, but you will do it. I'll do why it. Why will you do it? I mean, I'm a little crazy. You're a little crazy, a little but crazy. you also don't have shame. I want. I don't have shame. You and, will and fucking I want, yeah, I don't fail. Have any shame. I'll you, fail. Yeah. I'll fail. I'll fail. Why I mean, will I, you I, fail? I have the bay putty on. Yeah, I'll fail. Why will you I have fail? A what? I have that hoodie, that bay hoodie. It Give says, me that hoodie. Give it me says that hoodie. I'll fail. No, it's oh. it's just this hoodie that I that everyone makes fun of me for. 
because I did a sketch with it on. Right. But when I put this hoodie on, I become a different person. Yeah. People don't understand. <laughs> I don't. I don't give a shit about politics anymore. Yeah. When I put this hoodie on, yeah. I don't care yeah, yeah. about fucking. Oh, do you read a book? What book you read? You yeah. want to fucking? Yo, what do you think's gonna happen? No, no, no. Yeah. When I put this hoodie on, I realize mm -hmm. that I am beautiful. You are gorgeous. And that because yeah. a black man came up to me and he said, "You look fresh as fuck." When yeah. I had this on, yeah. And no one had ever had been complimentary to me like that before. Yeah. Yeah. And I've discovered that I can be a new person with just a one garment of clothing. Yeah. And I can maybe start smoking weed again and doing pills whoa, and drinking whoa, that cough whoa, syrup. Whoa, Wait, whoa, 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 hey, hey. Damn, makes a different per that person doesn't have a drug whoa. problem. The person in this is responsible. Okay. He can no, but I, I you know, Mike Lawrence said something really good once. Somebody said, I'm afraid to do this show. And Mike Lawrence goes, Are you too good to fail? I've never felt like I was too good to fail. Yeah. I think that's part of why I do shit. I don't feel like I'm too good to fail. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm too... If I put out a shit video and it gets a few thousand views, yeah. that's okay. A lot of comics don't want to start pursuing shit online because they're like, what am I going to have to build this fucking yeah. social media eyes. network? Yeah, you for, do. In the beginning, yeah, yeah. you do. You're going to have to do it yeah. and keep doing it. Yeah. And it is what it is. In the beginning, we I had no followers. I had nothing. Yeah. And, you know, But I, I don't feel like too good to... I feel like I got to... As long as I'm playing... I'm okay. If I'm on the field, I'm okay. If I'm on the bench, yeah. pointing at people on the field going, fuck them. Loser. That's where I, I get depressed. Yeah. I got to play. Yeah. And if you, that's the way that I, I feel good about myself, decent about myself, yeah. not tremendous. But there, There's a guy I grew up with, Siddiqui Thomas, right? Yes. Jamaican dude. Yeah. Hilarious. He would hit on every girl. Right. He would, he would his rate of like closing was probably like, Two out of ten or three out of ten. Right. Which is good. Okay. It's good? Yeah. I didn't think he was a loser when he failed. Right. I thought he was the bravest motherfucker right. I've ever there. seen. Yeah. Because when I was young, I was terrified right. of not only getting rejected, but my friends seeing me get rejected. Right. And then them, I thought in my mind, I was like, I'm going to lose some sort of social currency to, to my friends. They think I'm cool. The bravest thing anyone can do right now, yeah. literally to me, yeah. is talk to a woman. Yeah. <laughs> To sit down and speak to a woman and listen to them and take their opinion seriously is to me braver than jumping out of a plane without a parachute in my life. Like for me to have to do that yeah. is huge. Yeah, so that's yeah, a big. Yeah, yeah. No, no, up, no upside for you. Very little upside very for Very little. You. Well, when he yeah. comes and gave us that table in the back, yeah, which yeah. we paid her yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> she keeps acting like it's charity. I'm like, yeah, yeah. we just gave you money. <laughs> yeah. Get thousands and up. Yeah, but I love her. I love Whitney I, because Whitney is a, a power. You know, she's a, a real fucking. She's a great comic, and she great comic, great unstoppable and, force, unstoppable force. That's she the way will to get say it done. Yeah, she'll get she, it done. She's not afraid as well. She yeah. thinks she's afraid, right? But that is what pushes her. Does that make sense? How do you yeah. when you see people that? Do you believe that hard work is genetic? George Carlin said yeah. maybe it is genetic, and I there's do. something very interesting about that. Yeah, I, I know sorry. people who or, I look or, at. Or, or, uh, yeah. What is it? Um, nature versus nurture. I think it's there, it's nurture, but I think you have to see hard work at a very young age to get it. To, and then that's like the I saw my mom getting up every day, yeah, coaching a swim team, getting up at five a.m., doing yeah. everything. Uh, I I get it. I also saw my dad, who I love, like you know, was a really great musician, but never took it to the level he could have. Yeah. I so I, so I had both of those experiences. Right. Now, were you afraid of repeating what your dad? Oh yeah. yeah, I was afraid of having a studio in my house in the suburbs. Yeah. Uh Wait, like my yeah. dad. Oh no, huh. my dad huh. Huh. had a studio Whoa. where he would just sit in a room in his house in the suburbs, uh. but no one cared. He was just playing his guitar. Ah, okay, okay. that's way different. Totally I've won, different. I've won, father. Yeah, and yeah. Um, he. But no, he, I was afraid of. And my dad was a really talented guy, and he was talented because I knew that because other people would tell me he wouldn't. Like other people would say, "Your dad had this massive band on Long Island. in The '70s it was really big. Mm. Did you know about that?" And I'm like, kind of. And my dad didn't really keep a lot of that stuff around, right? There was mm -hmm. no, like, photos of it. So I was like, oh, okay. Catholic thing? like a No, just didn't. I think he didn't want to remind himself that he was on this track that never panned yeah. out. Yeah, 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 that shit's hard. Yeah. It's tough, yeah. right? And I get it. He had a kid. He had, well, he got, into, yeah. you know, got a sales job or whatever. But I, when I got into this, I was 25 years old, and I'm like, this is my, the last thing that I have the shot to be good at. There's not a lot of things you can do at 25, right? I mean, there's some, certainly, but a lot. This is the other thing about life that people don't really want to talk about, yeah. which is like, you know, at a certain point, you got you to gotta make a, a, a decision and stick with it. 
You don't. Yeah. Ha- you can't reinvent yourself what every point, three though? years. What point? You think, I don't know. I don't you know. think it's twenty five. No, I, think I don't you think can it's be an later. age. I think you can... I don't think it's a specific age. Okay. I think that it's a it's a it's a moment, uh-huh. and I don't think I don't think you can uh, reinvent everything you want. Like I know people that have wanted to be ten things. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is a problem. Yeah. Every three years, you want to <laughs> be another thing. And you know what I notice about those people? The each one of those things has one thing in common. Right. And they're just lily padding to the next thing because that one isn't working. And it's usually validation. I look at, yes. It's like, I want people to like me. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to be an actress. Doesn't work. I'm going to be yeah. a Pilates coach that's on YouTube. Uh, it's not really I look at out. people that are really funny and I say to myself, uh, I look at people that are really funny and haven't made a, a haven't made much of their careers. And yeah. I, and I, and I, and I think a lot of that is because they they don't get bored easily. I Ooh. get very bored. Who is that? I look at comics that are very funny that haven't built a fan base. That's a lot of people, right? <sighs> is it? No. But That's the thing. Like, there's really. There, there's I, guys, I don't want to be insulting, but there's there not are guys that, that we many. know that should be bigger. I can. I'm, and I should want, be I bigger. Want, yeah. Is yes. And I think. Dr- it's, but do they have drug issues? Usually, people that. With, that are no, yeah, I don't. I don't know if of, they do. I there's don't different think they levels do. of funny, right? Yeah. Like, like if we're just being honest, let's be honest. There is a lot of young it, comics are going to listen to this. They should, and they, they should. should fucking pay extra close attention they because should. they're not the elite level of funny yet. Yes, and you and I were and by both young comics. I mean Bill Burr. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, like you and I were both at the at the point where we're not funny. Right. Yes. And then we start to get to the point where we're funny. Right. right. But we're not elite funny yet. Yes. And then we get to the point where you want to get to elite funny. Right. And people yeah. at elite funny. It's so hard to get to. Now it's hard to get to, but they are making a living. Even if they're fucking drug addicts, they're making a living. Yeah. If they're drug addicts, they're not as famous as they should be, but they're still living. They're living. That's how yeah. few people are elite. Right, there, that's a great point. There's so this this is such a small group of people. It gets whittled down. It constantly gets whittled down. There's a handful, to a, of, a handful us. of people. There's yeah. really a handful of us. There's like very, when you think about, yeah. so it's like there's a lot of people in the middle, and they're like, "Why don't I have a career?" It's like, well, that's not how it works. Yeah, this shit is too fun for everybody to do it. Yeah. So if you want to have the career career, you have to be elite. Right. You have. Don't to you be think there's elite. a value in the fact that people like you and I think people like me get bored with shit easily? We get bored this and is, we go. I want to do cool shit and new shit. I can tell you exactly why I love stand up. Yeah. Because it is the basketball hoop changing height every single time you go on the court. Right. So you practice your free throws on a 10 foot hoop, yeah. right? You're like, I got that down. Right. And then you go up at hilarities in Cleveland. Is there a way that we can use a white sport? Yes. Just for my. <clears throat> yes. Te- is the, ten- the tennis? I got it. Ready? Okay. Okay. Ready? Yes. Here we go. I'm ready. Tennis? Yes. Every time you go onto the court, you have a different size racket. Wow. Yes. Now you're with me? Yes. So now okay. you're like, I perfected it with that one racket, but now, I'm at hilarities and it's this tiny little racket. And now when fuck? I try to serve, it doesn't do the whole. So I got to figure out, I got to figure out how to be so good at this, no matter what size racket I have. Yeah. It's, I'm going to be successful. And that's going to take you fucking decades. So people like you and I that can get bored of shit that we can get good at quickly. Right. We're going to go. Okay, okay, I move. I on. know some of these young guys who say things like, "I just want a good quality of life." But, 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 I mean, kill yourself, right? Stop, stop, stop you talking say, to me. Yeah, stop yeah, yeah, yeah. I love stop it. Yes. Why, why we have? Yes. Why, yes. why would you if tell me you that? Say, why would you tell me that? Uh, I want to conquer the uh, world. Right, right. <laughs> no, no. But it's true. No, no. If you're using those words and you're in your twenties, yeah. you're you're in trouble. I mean, like, I you're tell, in fucking trouble. I dude. tell people, you will go no further than your dream. Right. With this business. Right. 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 No further. So if you just want to make a living. That is, if you're lucky, right. you'll get there if you're lucky. Right. If you say, I want to sell out arenas, you might get to theaters. Yeah. And that's pretty fucking that's sick. That's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. But you got to go, like, dreams cost nothing. You yeah. might as well just fucking dream. Yeah. I want to make a living to me, you quit already. Right. You quit already. I said that I wanted to get killed by the CIA, but I may settle for, <laughs> I may settle for half a million YouTube subscribers. Hey, yo. 
Um, <laughs> when Trump is gone, <laughs> yeah. when he leaves, does yeah. he leave? Or is he still like, obviously he'll leave, but like, yeah. is he still going to be a force? Does he just go play golf? What do you think he does? What, does what, he keep doing the rallies? I'm curious. It's hard. He's he's the biggest star. He is so and talented. He's just so like, talented. What is that called? That's not stand up, but what is I that called? I don't know called? what it is. But, I, I, it's, it doesn't have a name. But is it like, are you emceeing? Like what? Yeah. What is that skill he, he's that just, he's? He's off the top. He's riffing. He's yeah. he's in the moment. He's with his people. He's just leading that cult. Like, does he keep doing that? Does he? If it's that easy, how could you not imagine stand up? I know. Was that easy? Was that easy? Like yeah. he's literally doing what every stand up wishes stand up was, yes. which is I'll go up there, just be me. I'll be. I just talk. You yeah. guys go crazy. Yeah. I don't have to think of these like brilliant, clever like big right. switches yeah. and uh, premises that are genius. Yeah. Literally, just say what are the words you guys wanted me to say? Right. Lock her up. <sighs> yeah, it goes crazy. So it's like, how could you not do that? Right. The question is, his age. Don't you think it's, his age it's, it's plays high. a little? It's, yeah. it's high. He's up there. He, if he's sixty four. He's, this guy's going to be a nuisance. Yeah, but he's in his 70s, late 70s. Yeah, it's getting there. Do you want to do that? Do you want to be on Adderall? At a certain point, you have to you have to you have to close it up. Yeah. I just for like life value. Like right. do you really want to like go through tweet all fucking day? I think that he says no. Right. Now, right. if he's that much yeah. of a maniac, which all of them are, that he's really think he's going to run again? Right. Then he's got to stay in. I think he's just fronting like he's going to do it because he wants to have enough uh, political leverage to get shit he wants. Yeah, probably right. Right? Yeah, I don't think he's gonna. He wants to run again. I know somebody talks to him. He does think he's running again. He's not running. That's again. he's not running again. But now, do you think they're gonna lock him up? No. I I agree. They won't. They don't want to tear the country bad. apart. It looks, just go. Not even tear yeah. the country apart. It looks bad. You can't lock up presidents. You can't lock it's him just, up. It's a bad it's look. It's a bad look for everyone in the world. Yeah. yeah just let it go. Exactly. You let, let that it go. go. Everything's cool. It's like, oh, he's a crook. It's like, that's why people like him. Yeah. You've identified why people like they're him. They're all crooks. You identify why they're, he has a fan crooks. base. Yeah. 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 They're it's all like, crooks. Yeah. It's Who's a, not a crook? Right. It's true. Who's not a crook? Not me. Not me. But that's the thing. Like, if we were crooks, we wouldn't be in entertainment. No. We'd be in politics. Yeah, it's true. Like, if you actually care about the world at all, I'm not saying we're out here fucking changing the world. Like, I'm not like doing this like you know narcissistic approach to yeah. to, to content, right? But like, yeah. I think that we have way more sway on the average person's thinking than a politician. Like, right. what the fuck did they ever do? They just, nothing. It, they do nothing. Nothing. So, w the last time you were on Rogan, or yeah. not the last time, but a few times ago, you said Netflix going out of business. Yes. And now you have a show on Netflix. Yeah. Do you have any more predictions? I'm a politician, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any more predictions that might come true? Like, Bro, do you want to? Do you want to say that Amazon Prime's going out of business, <laughs> and in two years from now, you're uh, 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 like, you have, you have a you? huge deal? You know more than most people. Yeah. What is it? Fake business is your yeah, shirt, right? Fake it's like, business. I didn't understand yeah. modern capitalism, right? Right. I I, li I was approaching Netflix, right? Like yeah. most businesses, where in order to stay around, you have to produce a profit. No, it's fake. I didn't realize oh, this. Fake. We're in the era of fake business. So, so, so yeah. Uh, when I say that, I'm not just going out there like uh, I joke around on the podcast, like yeah. the 48 laws of power. You got to right. stir up water to catch fish. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this is all part of my my grand plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, no, it wasn't. I literally was going, okay, if they haven't declared themselves that they're you know profiting yeah. off of their business and they're about to lose the most watched shows then it's a problem how the fuck are you going to stay in business yeah but right and then i found out oh it's a stock scam stock, it's a stock scam as long as the stock price is high yeah. you don't it's the same thing with amazon they don't even make any money sirius xm spotify a lot of these major media operations are stock scams. So when I find out that it's yeah. fake business, it's just, then you give do me it. some money, then baby! Give me yeah. some money! It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. That's just what it... That's just what it comes down to. In all to. seriousness, I was like, when I found out that that's how these things work, and that's how Uber works, and that's how yeah. a lot of these like tech-based companies work, I, I was like, oh, I have to start thinking about, oh, okay, this is, this is very different. Like, when it goes public... Public is just a way that the initial investors get to cast out, cash out. It, it's quite, quite fascinating how it works. Oh, like, yeah. Like going, the whole idea of the stock market was raising money. Right. Right. Now the fundraising happens first. Right. That's the, sorry, that's the initial yeah. stock market, if you will. Yes. Then they cash out on the fucking dummies that right. go buy it on the stock market. Yeah. And then whatever happens to the company, they don't give a flying fuck. It's the era of, uh, it's smoke and mirrors, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's so exactly what it is. once I realized that, I was like, okay, this is the game. 
there are so many people that value uh, a, a streaming platform more than they value YouTube and social media. Right. You and I are entrenched in YouTube and social media, right? Yeah. So we value content. I don't care what screen it's on. Right. I realized how valuable a name brand is to some people when I announced the Netflix thing and I had family members message me and they were like, uh, congratulations on Netflix and your engagement. And I was like, you didn't- To those two things in the same sense. It's like, you knew I was engaged for a wow. month. Wow, yeah. But Netflix that wasn't and, big enough. And the engagement, yeah. yeah. And then Netflix happened, they were like, okay, I think I should do a little double congratulations. Netflix has is, is, is become a part of our vocabulary. Yes. It's become a, a, a part of our everything. Netflix so, and chill, all that, boom. yeah. So for me, I just want to, I want to create stuff for the most people. The people have always been my salvation, so it's like, right. I want to be in front of the most people possible, and if there's more people over there that I haven't touched it, and I think that could really- be interested in the content we're making. I want to yeah. I want to do that. Of course. And honestly, I I got to give credit where it's due. These motherfuckers were cool with the content. I thought it was going to be were a cool, fight. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a fight. They just let me put out whatever. Yeah. Like they were so, and I'm not saying my experience is going to be the average comics experience. Like I came in with a lot of equity and right. it wasn't something I'd really like needed per right. se. But they were super supportive. They we went over budget. They stepped in. Yeah. Like, I feel like when execs do the right thing, you got to say complimentary shit. Like, the exec that let Ricky Gervais do that yeah. Golden Globes yeah. speech. It's like, and I don't then, know who that is, but we got to congratulate him because he's- that person. His shit is on the line, too. And also, Netflix let Kevin Spacey direct the whole thing, which is Kevin crazy. Kevin Spacey directed the whole thing, the whole, bro. Your whole show. It is unbelievable. Amazing. And, and he is- it's Let me tell you something huge. about Kevin and his lap. The guy will sit you down- yeah, and 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 he'll start just petting you, dude, and like you you'll feel insecure, and he'll just pet you back into yeah. having that self esteem that yeah. you need to save yeah. America. You know what I mean? Maybe more. Shout to you. Kevin, dude, for real. Yeah, Kevin's great. I'll tell you this: it is it's crazy to watch how much you've done in the span of time you've done it because mm. it's not. I mean, you've been doing comedy a long time, mm. but you've you've been able to do a lot of really cool things in in a, in a span of years. Yeah. And it's like you're, ru it's not rushing, but like you are, you're running at a pace mm. of somebody who wants to really have a lot of things. More so than just a comic, right? Mm. Do you ever see yourself down the road with a platform, with a network, with a uh, whatever it is? Because you're running at the pace of somebody that wants more than, and it's a, it's a compliment. It's, yeah, you, yeah. you seem to want more than just, I'm a great comedian. Mm. Do you 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 like helping people? You like provide. You know, yeah. is there a, a, a version of Andrew Schultz down the road that has something that's bigger than just his own career that has kind of a movement, a culture, or whatever? I bigger than career, sure, but not necessarily like a platform. Like I I, I got I'm going to do a film one of these days. Yeah, I, I really want to create that, and I want it to be like I want to kind of create this like Rat Pack vibe. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think that's what podcasts are in a lot of ways. It's yeah. like, we watch those movies, like the right. Ocean's Eleven's movies. Yeah, like, absolutely. We're just watching characters hang out. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. podcast. That's exactly that's what it is. And yeah. like, this is a podcast. Like, absolutely. Like, we're just hanging, right? Yeah. And like, if we can, for me, what I would love to do is create that environment and then insert all of us into that environment as a film and then do that every couple of years. Like, I think what I'll eventually do in my career is do less projects, but just kind of bigger projects. Okay. And then like, everybody in that world, I want them to be you know millionaires and successful again it really like, is like a, it's what it used to be every man for himself it feels a lot less like that now that's the worst model bro, it's the model sucks, is a man. team model people helping each other out not relying as much on uh people in the industry although when you can collaborate and work with people that support you that's great build up enough equity so that you're yeah. doing the, the show you want to do with them right and and you need to build the equity up because why would they take a risk why would they go out there and take a risk on you if you have improved at works? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like Chappelle, you know, God bless his soul, he's whining about the deal that he got from Comedy Central. It's right. like the guy didn't have a hit before that show. Right. Why would you get It's also why an would you pull deal? why would you pull a D, why would you pull a show off platforms where like people that just poor people want to watch your show. They love your show. Yeah, the whole thing is yeah, cockamamie it's to wild. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's but wild. it's like I mean, as a creator, I support him getting all the rights in whatever way he sure. wants to do. Get it? The way he's going about it is his corner to me. But he's like, yeah. I got to feel bad that you were bullied. Like, well, we have him here. Get him out. Dave Chappelle. Dave, come on, come on out. Come on out. 
Um, but just start serious, smoking six. But it's like, yeah. So it's just like I don't know. I want to. I want to create that shit. I want us to just. I just want us to run things, and I want us to create really cool projects, and I want us to have enough equity to like do the comedy that we want to do that the majority of people like, and it's not you know infiltrated by fucking the bloggers or whatever like that. Like I don't want right. You know I don't want to deal with that. No so, one cares. I mean no one no cares. cares. No, no one cares. cares. Yeah. No one cares. no one cares. I'd be upset if there weren't. Yeah, you bad got. Things. Yeah, if, you, if you're not talking about me, I'm irrelevant. Yeah, so like, I need you to say bad things so that people watch it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine watching the thing that people go. It is a. It is just so much fun. For or you, you know and the what whole it is? Family. The worst. The worst. I think the worst uh, thing you can say about anything is what was that again? <laughs> right. You know what I mean. Nobody knows what it is. When does New York? Uh, find a couple of questions here about New York because you're yep. such a New York guy. Do you ever leave New York? And when do you think it comes back? I think, and I'm. You know me. I'm very bullish on New York. Right. But like. I was too, and then I left. I know, and you have this like insane life here. And don't get me wrong, I come to your home, yeah, and I I go, this is nice, yeah. You know, like my girl, I was telling you, lives up in Santa Barbara. Yeah, right? well, now she her family's from Santa Barbara, and I've seen like the way that they live, and it's just like, yeah, dude, I'd love to wake up and have a view of the water, and yeah, like, yeah, all yeah. these things. Like, right. this is, I mean, this is fucking life, yeah. Um, and when comedy clubs and shit are shut down, you start going like, I could do that, right. Right, so I'm I'm not against that, but I I am in New York. My studio's in New York. My guys are in New York, of course, and it's yeah. like I don't at this point. I'm not ready to have the conversation where I force them to make a decision where they. No, want No, of to course, and you, you know, know what what I mean? when I came to L.A., I was really worried about. I I just figure for whatever reason, I've adjusted here, I, and I don't think L.A. is the spot really anymore. And like it might be. I hope it is. I'm here for another year. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know where the spot's gonna be. It's I don't where the know. talent is. It's where the talent is. If we want to move to Tallahassee, that's the right. Spot. That's I, the I really spot. believe. I agree. That. I agree with you. So it's just like yeah, we're we the gravity. Yeah. And we're gonna make cool shit. Yeah. And like, who knows what happens with stand up? Who know? I think what you're doing right now is just like, that's what I'm telling my girl. I'm like, yo, let's rent a place. Yeah. Literally, what you've done. You're yeah. like, what, like two months ahead of me. Like yeah, rent an just, insane place. Not even two months. Or yeah. a month ahead of me. Yeah, like yeah. rent an insane place. Yeah. That's it's expensive. It's not but cheap. But you should aspire to have a place like this. Yeah. Yeah. Create. You're there for a year. We don't know what the world looks like in a year. We don't. If everything snaps back, you're like, ooh, yeah. I'm I'm in LA, baby, and I right. got my great place. Yeah. If it doesn't, you're yeah. like, okay, maybe I move to some place that has the perfect environment that I want to create. That's in. the other thing. I'm I'm here for a year. It's a, and the reason that we got we got the house is we could put a studio. We wanted to put a really cool studio yeah, here. And we put sick. a cool Hello. studio in. Yeah. And 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 uh, and I want to do other things. Uh, we're doing other types of shows. We're going to do stuff with social media people, which mm -hmm. is going to be interesting. Great, because I'm outside of that world a little bit. We're going to start doing stuff with people that I wouldn't work with As, necessarily. But you should, but I should. Yeah, why not? And and we're going to figure all that out. And uh, I think that it's going to be like it's an adventure. There are so few certainties right now yeah everything is up in the air but that's kind of where guys like us thrive yeah that's why i i, I don't mind it i don't mind yeah. it i i actually like it i don't mind it um final question yeah i just want to say like yeah. i knew we were gonna win the pandemic yeah i knew this well i appreciate it yeah. but i knew this yes at yeah. the beginning yeah i knew this yeah. yeah i would not be surprised if we didn't have text message conversations about this we probably did it's just and like, then, and what is two sociopaths just going? We're gonna win the pandemic. Yeah, like the the news being like, there's another mobile three hundred thousand people die. Is like we're gonna win this, hey, and I'm like, I agree. That I think view, we might. that video is popping. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds crazy, <laughs> but at the same time, like when there's chaos, yeah, certain people can thrive in that, right? Because chaos, one. What are the, about the people that took this period off? Pussy. Yeah. Pussy. What about the people that left the places and went, like, people that just didn't fight this out? Well, Does that say something about their, their character? There's a difference between leaving, there's a difference between leaving and not fighting. Okay. Because, like, I think L.A. is horrible the way that it's handled. Oh, so it's like, a horrible place. Everything's fucking closed. It's it horrible. Sucks. It's horrible when it's open. It's No. You see when it's open? <laughs> or it's worse. I, I think. Maybe worse. Like, you can't live here. It's with horrible. everything closed down. Even it's in New very York, bad. like you and I are from New York. Yeah. They said they've been closing things down forever. I can go get a burger at a place if I want. Yeah, they yeah, literally yeah. said, I'm not going to say the place, yeah. but like a very nice restaurant in right. New York, 
I had a party of like uh, 12 people, right? right? Right. We're all good because we're getting tested for Netflix. Right. I know right. literally everybody does not have corona. Right. Right? Right. For a fact. Of course. So we're having a little celebration dinner. I look at cert certain people where I go, like, I was like, I feel like some people rose to the occasion in terms of just working. Yeah, yeah Just yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. I love working, right? Yeah, yeah. I was a drug addict. So if yeah. I'm not working, I'm, I'm in trouble. Doing drugs. At, correct. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I just look at certain people and I go, and I get it if you're a young comic, I get it. I get like, no, if you, I no. don't get that. Yeah, I don't okay. get that. Yeah, you're right. But the point That's I was true. making about the restaurant. Good like, point. <laughs> you're not wrong. They said, they said under wrong. 10 people, yeah. yeah, it has to be under 10 people. I call the guy, I'm like, hey, I got 12 people. Can yeah. we do this? Of course. That's New York. Everything's right. negotiable. It's negotiable. Everything's negotiable. So yeah. it's like, do people think, oh, New York is all shut down? Nothing shut down. Right. I get a slice of pizza if I want to get a slice of yeah. whatever. But the same thing, it's like, yo, if you're a young comic and you're getting paid by the government to not do anything, and you're you better not creating fucking, shit. You're crazy. You're fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, which is I'm proud of the dudes that I work with. You know, Ben always. You know, my, that kid Dan that opens for me was out there in Florida making stuff. Like when you see people making stuff, yeah. it's it's positive. Even ben, if it ben sucks. works his ass off all the time, like to just make this show better. Mm -hmm. This whole studio is him. This is, I have nothing to do with this studio. Right. Literally, I mean, yeah. I walked in, I saw it. I'm like, it's amazing. I have nothing to do with this, this studio. Yeah, I mean, Ben. It coordinated this entire thing. Yeah. So it, it, it's like just find, I think, a way to work. Yeah. And don't wait. Like there's too many people right now that are like waiting. They're like waiting for someone to, for? to open the barn door. And it's like, guys, upset, we're good. Like they get upset at, at us, I think, a lot of times. And it's, I think it's because they don't like the fact that we took our career in our own hands. Right. And I think it kills them that they exist on the charity of others. Yes. Where we exist on connectivity of people. Like, my career yeah. is because people fuck with me. And that's yeah. always been the way it was. That's it. Like, if I ever was on a show, the yeah. executives never really liked me. They would right. test it. You know what it's called? Like, focus group or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, focus group. They'd it, yeah. focus group it, and then, like, I'd do really well. And they're like, oh, I guess people like this kid, right? Right. So, for me, put me in front of the people. Give me the people. That's all I care about. I want to say, especially with the fucking Netflix thing, like, I want to express what I think most people are actually feeling. And right. nobody's fucking saying, or very few of us are saying. And it's like... That's where I put my faith in. I literally put my faith in people. I have tons of faith in people. Yeah. I don't, but I yeah. they find me okay. funny, and that's yeah. okay. Like yeah. I, that is yin and yang, bro. Yeah, yin and yang. Yeah. Like I, yeah. And they find me funny. No, but I get, in a way, I do, because they finance, yes. they fund things. Like, listen, yes. Yes. at the end of the day, I do think people can recognize uh, funny. Yes. And I think they can recognize funny. And, like, being authentic. Yeah. It's like people, I don't know, it's not that fucking hard. People act like being, like, like a talent exec is a hard job. It's like we make it no, very easy. No, it's not. For it's you. not a hard job at all. Yeah, it's like I could tell you're funny. Yeah. Like when I saw the videos, I was like, oh yeah, this guy's, this guy's got funny. it. Yeah. Is it? This right. is it? You know what I mean? Like funny, yeah. Ryan Long, we were talking funny, about the thing. Funny kid. Funny. Like I could tell he's got it. You got it. Right. It's, so it's like, and then I see certain people, and I go, you're trying really hard. You don't have it yet. Maybe you won't ever get it. But you might but, get it. But you might get it. But yeah. you don't have it yet. Yeah. And that's just what it is. What's the see that? So that's interesting. Maybe mm. to end on. What is the differential? Between eventually getting it mm. and never getting it, and and is it even something that we even know? I or think is it that, just an unknown. I think it's like, I think some people have something that is that almost everybody can attach onto. It's like lizard. There's like a lizard quality to it where it's just like, oh, this is funny. Like fucking what is his name chris farley or whatever right, like that like right. he had a lizard funny yeah i don't think he said a single setup punch in his never, life never but when he did things it was funny amazing and yeah. you laugh right and it's lizard right you know what i mean primal yeah. shit primal, right yeah so some of us have it, like eddie murphy people like that too lizard primal primal, primal yeah right like bernie mac Primal. Pri right yeah. like, like yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. what is so yes. it's like some of us have a primal connectivity yeah. right some people will have 60,000 fans that really relate to their specific experience. And having that fan base has never existed in history except right now. Maybe with Colts wow. ahead. Yeah. So, like, you might not have it where the world will gravitate to you. That's There's only a few of us that are going to have that. But you have the opportunity with the Internet to find the other 60,000 people who have existed in life just like you, and you're speaking for them. Right. And that has never existed before, and now it has. So it's just like, figure it out. Yeah. Find those fucking people. Find the people. 
Find the fucking people. I, yeah. So to me, that's why it gets annoying if I hear bitching about shit. Yeah. There's just like, there's there's know. enough avenues out there. Yeah, you figure. This out. comes out when Christmas or something. Uh, the twenty sixth. Yeah. Yeah. The day after Christmas. So New Year's is coming. Yeah. What do you What do you say? Yeah. You say twenty twenty was a crazy year. Yeah. Very good for you. Good for me. Bad for many. Bad for many. Yeah. But isn't that every year? This one's a little. Uh, this was a little extreme. Yeah. It's a little extreme. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah. What are we thinking? Okay, so what is it like? Every every uh, correction is an overcorrection. I think is that what yes. they say? Yes. Yes. So so if every correction is an overcorrection, are we overcorrecting joy? So like. Right. If this this year was overcorrecting sad yeah. sadness, yeah, and is next year like we're just gonna lean into the things that make us feel good, yeah, and, like, and is it too much even? And that maybe twenty twenty two we start going. Let's let's even yeah, it up. Let's like, level it yeah. up. Like I think I, I think you said something like, brilliant. <laughs> like what? <laughs> this is too much joy. I like, think I think you're gonna you said something brilliant in the beginning. It's gonna be a week of like whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they call an old friends. Like I think people are gonna call <laughs> old friends, and then you're gonna be at lunch with them going. <laughs> Man, I liked when we couldn't legally do this. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, like I appreciate it. Tell everyone, and they yeah. follow you already anyway. But yeah. tell people where to go and get this is Andrew Schultz, Schultz Saves America on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. check it out on Netflix, and uh, that'd be great, man. There's a conspiracy uh, uh, theories episode that uh, I wanted. I really wanted you to see and just see what yeah, you thought I, about it. Yeah, I'm gonna it. watch it. I'm yeah. excited. Check I know it out. that. I know that. I, That's uh, the second episode, but like you know, we would always call Tim and ask yeah. him. You know, even, I love when you call because I love just talking. Yeah, so but, I'm, and I love, you know this yeah. really well, and I like, know a lot of it. You yeah. know it in a funny way too. That's another thing. Like, yeah, some, some conspiracy folks like. They're it's too so, intense. Yeah, it's, it's my, so intense. My conspiracy yeah. is like late night Wendy's parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's really what it was. Like me and my friends coming down, smoking yeah. weed, just eating Wendy's and yeah. talking shit. And yeah. you got to make people laugh. If you want yeah. their attention, make gotta them make them laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, that's what Trump. That's what Trump did. You yeah. know, he got our attention by making us laugh. Yes, that was comedy. So it's like, yeah. It, I mean, that's the other thing. And in closing, it's like if you're out there and you don't have somebody's attention, fucking make them laugh. Make them laugh, and you'll get their attention. Andrew Schultz, thank you. Congrats God bless on you everything. once again. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having me, man. brother. Thank Good you. Show.